Everyone, remain calm. Yeah, ooh, ah, that's how it always starts. And later there's running and screaming. Somebody talk to me, what is happening? Welcome to Jurassic World. You're listening to the Jurassic Park Podcast. You want to consult here or in my bungalow? <laughs> Hold on to your butt. Well, we're back. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the 160th episode of the Jurassic Park Podcast. I'm your host, Brad Jost, and we're here to discuss all things Jurassic Park. In this episode, we're actually going to head out to Site B with Jennifer Tarek to sift through our thoughts and give you our full reviews on the evolution of Claire by Tess Sharp. Now, we figured we'd give you the review about a month after the release of the book so that people could catch up on the reading. So, as a warning, if you have not read The Evolution of Claire, please do not listen as we spoil the entirety of this book within our conversation. If you have read the book, please continue along and give this episode a listen because it is a lot of fun as usual. So for everybody who has not read the book, you have been warned, there will be spoilers. For anybody that uh, left a voicemail about the evolution of Claire, we will be featuring them in the mailbag, um, and I think that's about two weeks from now. So uh, just uh, wanted to let you know, in case you submitted one, we're going to save them for the mailbag later on. And also, for the news this week, uh, we're going to skip over it, despite a ton of really cool stuff coming out of San Diego Comic-Con and elsewhere. But we're going to hit it next week with our brand new segment with Aaron Beyer, that's going to be a monthly segment, just like the mailbag in a way, called The Jurassic Wire. Now, in that segment, we're going to dive into all the latest news and community discussion. We've been kind of experimenting with that formula for uh, a little while. A bunch of episodes back, you may have heard me and Aaron diving through the news together. So it's kind of a jump off of that segment in a way, and we're going to expand it. We're going to make it an hour, two hours, however long it needs to be to dive into all that latest news and community discussion because I've seen a ton of discussion online recently with regards to Fallen Kingdom, to the other movies, to the the evolution of Claire. So we're going to discuss all of these community topics and, of course, all the latest news, the big news that's out there at the time. So me and Aaron Beyer will be tackling that next week. But anyway, this is an episode featuring Jennifer Tarek this week, which means it's going to be super long by default. So (laughs) why don't we get this one started off? by heading out to Site B. Thank God for Site B. Site B? Yes, Site B. No force on Earth or Heaven could get me on that island. Site B, don't worry. I'm not making the same Uh, mistakes again. I'm not. Okay, so there's another island with dinosaurs. No fences. Site B. And you want to send people in? Yes. A very few people. Yes. It's not a research expedition anymore. It's a rescue operation. It's leaving right now. You this cannot can't land can't on this island. island. This is Isla Sorna. Site B. Yes. Uh, we're on Isla Sorna, and we need to find... We need to talk to the boat. Site B. No, a lady. Enough. Wrong frequency. We're back here on Site B, Isla Sorna, and uh, today I'm joined by Jennifer Tarek, and we're in that, uh, what did I call it before? The swampy, swampy areas? We're in, it's, I was it's not very nice. I was just going to bring that up. I was you just going to bring that up because I remember I brought, I brought the boots last time. We were in the swamp. <laughs> yeah. And did we, yeah. T- were we talking about this book, The Evolution of Claire, last time? Or was that something else? I forget. I think it was. With the swampy areas. I don't areas. remember five minutes ago. Yeah. <laughs> Well, like I said, it's a bit swampy in here, but, uh, you know, we're going to keep the book up off the ground so it doesn't get wet and the page is all soaked. And we're going to go through The Evolution of Claire, the book by Tess Sharp that covers uh, the early life of Claire Deering and uh, and some other stuff there. So um, why don't we just dive right into it? Uh, what do you think? Um, I really, really, really liked it. Um, 
I liked well, okay, I liked the beginning a lot and I liked the end. The middle I enjoyed like I enjoyed the whole book, but the middle just kind of felt like filler in a weird way. But it was good filler, but it felt uh-huh. like filler. I don't know. But overall though, overall I really liked it. I I'm really happy with this book. I I've read a lot of people really liking this book. So um I, I can't really have any big complaints on it. Yeah, uh, me either, really. I I have, you know, there was moments where I was reading through the book and I I maybe like rolled my eyes a little bit here or there due to something being like super on the nose or, or you know, maybe a little young adult, but that stuff usually doesn't bother me enough to, to care. So I, I just continued reading and I loved so much of this book. Um, there's a lot of great details about... Um, about Claire, first off. I mean, that's obvious. There's a lot of stuff in there that shifts our perspective. It tries to. I'm not sure if I still buy it or not, but yeah. um, but it's there, and it's that's what we have. That's what uh, that's what we're dealing with. And and actually, um, I I was listening to uh, one of our our first episodes that we did the mailbag um, back in two, uh, 2017. And Jen, you had said something. We were talking about canon. Somebody asked us the question about canon, and um, you basically said like, "Oh, I just, I just go along with whatever they tell me," <laughs> and I just laughed about that because we they were talking. I guess the question was about like, "Do you make up your own canon? Are you thinking about this or that, or or diving deep into things?" And you were just like, "I don't really do that. I just, I just do whatever they tell me," and that's that's basically what I'm saying, right? You know, we. We have these things that happen. Maybe we don't like every aspect, but this is what they're telling us. So let's stick to this canon because I love the canon. I, I stand by myself that <laughs> from a year ago. I, I still just do whatever they tell me. And they tell – I can tell them a lot this this go around. So I got a lot behind there. But this this book I consider full canon. I mean oh, yeah. it is full canon. Yeah. Um, I, I'm with you though. I don't – I didn't love all of the young adult stuff. I get why it's there. But I definitely, as well, rolled my eyes sometimes and even was just kind of like, okay, let's get over the segment. Because, you know, when you're entering a young adult like segment of the book, you're like, all right, well, let's just get this over with and get back to the story part. And that's, yes. that's what I was more interested mm-hmm. in. And it was just a, a matter of, yeah, yeah, get over that and let's move on. And I mean, there's some of those moments here and there, but not enough to really impact the whole book for me. For the most part, um, the thing that I wish was more of was the transition because that it feels like it ended really quickly and i would have liked to seen a lot more of that yeah instead of the middle because i the middle was fun but it didn't get me to the end of where i wanted to be and when it got there it like rushed there really quickly i i fully agree with you there um we'll probably touch on that a little bit more as well later on but uh, i definitely agree with that point um, and, you know, all the stuff in between, uh, cause the beginning had some really good bits. The end, like you said, it sort of wrapped up really quickly, but the, the, the middle, um, I know you said you sort of lost it at times there, but I think, you know, a lot of the book had some great moments with characters we already know, um, and a lot of new ones as well, but the, the, I'll need some more time with them on, on rereads and stuff like that to kind of pull them into this world a little bit more. Um, but as far as the, ca- the characters that we already know, I loved like the setup of those and, uh, you know, expanding those characters, giving them a little bit more life, like people like Mizrani or Dr. Wu um, and some of the dinosaurs as well. I-, I thought there was some really great moments around all of those things, building this world out, which, um, which is what I was looking for because the young adult stuff is not made for me. Uh, that's fair. You know, it's yeah. it's not mm-hmm. that's I'm not the demographic for this exactly. I mean, it's a story for all Jurassic fans, but I'm not really the demographic of a, a young adult novel. And that's fine. And that's perfectly good. So I have no problem with it at all. And I, uh, you know, when I was looking back at like a lot of books that I read and stuff like that, I'm like, well, you know, a lot of them actually do turn out to be like a young adult you know, novel, like uh, uh, whether it's like the Hunger Games or a lot of the Star Wars ones, uh, Lost Stars uh, came from from that uh, series there. And that's an amazing book. Uh, the Ahsoka book, that, that was amazing. And this all fits in line with that. So I think some of the best work for Star Wars is being done in young adult. And I think the same goes here. Um, so I had no no real issues with the book aside from, like I said, like some little eye rolls here and there and stuff like that. But I loved what they did with uh, what tested with this novel. 
Yeah, I mean, for me, the front portion portion of the book, as in like up to when she gets her internship, like when, okay, when she meets the boy on the plane, like the beginning to the plane. I love and it's rereadable for me. The mm-hmm. ending when he dies after that. Oh, spoiler! <laughs> he is. Re- oh, we're doing spoilers, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll put okay. it in the beginning of the show so we don't have to worry about that. Because <laughs> we want to talk about the whole thing. Yes, of course. Um, so, so at the part where he dies onward is rereadable. But the middle part I enjoyed, but I don't know how rereadable it is for mm-hmm. me. Okay. And that, yeah. that's where it loses me a little bit. So let me go ahead and do what I've done 65 other times. I'm going to read the synopsis <laughs> for those who, <laughs> I guess, haven't read it or want a refresher like we do, because uh, it's been a little while since I read it now. It's been a few weeks probably. Uh yeah, uh, probably about a month. So yeah. it's not completely fresh, but I have my notes. I'm ready to go. So I'm going to read the synopsis one more time for you. That's it. No more after this. This is the last time. Um, it's what the people want. Really. It is. It's they here. really do need it, though. Um, yeah. So here we go. Freshman year of college is full of challenges. There are messy roommates, cranky professors, and disgusting dining halls. But for Claire Deering, add how to properly avoid being eaten by a dinosaur to that list. The year is 2004, and Claire has been given the chance of a lifetime, the opportunity to intern at the Jurassic World theme park less than a year before it opens to the public. She is laser-focused, with her sights set on bettering the lives of animals worldwide. But the park isn't all test-driving gyrospheres, and follow—man, here we go— Uh, I had to pick up the thing because it was a little too far for me to read the the middle part. Uh, uh, So where was I? It's not just uh, all test driving gyrospheres and falling head over heels for a fellow student named Justin, though she does that too. Rumors and suspicions flood the island and Claire is determined to uncover the truth. As Claire searches for answers, she and Justin find themselves thrust into a sinister plot uh, that will leave Claire forever changed. Now forced to question everything she thought she knew, she's brought one step closer to to the Claire film fans met in Jurassic World and who they'll meet again in Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. So there we go. All right. I'm really glad you read that because as you're reading that, I was taking notes because you were bringing up things that I remembered reading about. To like mm-hmm. kind of expand on, so I actually have talking points now. Yeah, and, and it's interesting because I hadn't read that synopsis until now since reading the book. So I kind of wanted to. It's like kind of going back and watching the trailers after you've seen the movie just to see how things compare. Um, yeah. And I think that that synopsis is spot on. Like that's exactly what happens here. Um, you know, she it, it starts off, uh, you know, freshman year and she's leaving school and all that. And then she moves to the island. She meets Justin. And all this stuff happens. Uh, conspiracy stuff, which actually happens pretty early on, if I remember correctly. Um, and then, you know, they search for those answers and then they, uh, you know, Claire maybe ends up changed. But um, I don't know. Let's <laughs> let's yeah, I would like to Go ahead. see more on that. I would have liked to see more on that because that's the part I was really interested in and really wanted to see the most. And whenever that was going on, I, I was like, oh, we're already at the end of the book. I remember being way almost at the end, three chapters left or something. Yeah. And she wasn't quite there yet. And I'm like, oh, man, you better hurry up because I'd like to see this. And I'd be kind of let down if we don't get to here. And how are you going to do it in like three chapters? And I was getting a little concerned. Yeah. And they, they got there really quickly. But yeah, I wish because the front part was done so well. I did not think would get that much detail in her applying and her thought process to apply and her wanting to apply and really wanting it and showing you that she really wanted to do this and what her her motives were and her ambition. I really yeah. loved those early chapters. I did not expect that. I thought it would just be one prep chapter of oh i got this and i'm i'm going and it'll be like the island on chapter two so to have the reasoning behind there i really really am happy about that and then the middle as i say you get lost in so i wish that kind of what took maybe because you know you could break up the middle into maybe four sub stories ish and maybe you taken out one of them and put in an extra thing on the back end i mm-hmm. maybe would have liked better because i I'm, yeah. feel like cheated on the back end yeah, I do too. Um, you know, but but uh, I I didn't feel cheated in the beginning because it it started no. in a place that I I was not expecting, and that's after Jurassic World. 
Um, that's that's not what I was expecting at all. Um, yeah, and the then, prologue. Yeah, the prologue. It was it was very unexpected. I I kind of thought we were just jumping right into freshman year, but I was I was really glad to see like a little bit of not not too much fallout or, or whatever. But basically, you know, her saying that you know she's a survivor. She still dreams about that moment in the paddock um, or nightmares. I don't know what you want to call it, but um, <laughs> and that there's conspiracy theories all on the internet as to like what went down and stuff like that. And uh, she's kind of going through things in in her uh, life there and and flashing back to basically this moment here um, where she's a freshman and all that and where she gets this uh, cicada pin and uh, and all that so that I, I, that was very very surprising for me this beginning of the book I thought it was fantastic I think we even talked about this on our pre podcast on this as we were like well wonder if she's kind of telling a memoir like she has the intro in real time and then the extra outro i don't <laughs> in like future time or something there was no outro but um i may have wanted an outro because it would have bookended nicely yeah you're right but it I, really would have yeah. yeah um you know but you know after that prologue it basically yeah like i said it moves right to her being 19 years old um and this is where you know you, they try to set up because, um, you know, we talked with Tess and she she basically said that uh, – both of us did actually. And she said that, um, you know, she crafted most of this story and there were certainly notes from Universal and stuff like that as to where the story should go. So, you know, together they kind of crafted this whole story. And, um, you know, so starting off at 19 years old, they wanted to introduce the fact that she is this person that we see in Fallen Kingdom. And in that movie – she, you know, people are still wondering, like, oh, how, like people that don't read this stuff or don't follow the DPG stuff and all that. People out there that are just writing reviews for any old website are saying, like, I still don't buy the fact that Claire is 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 uh, where she is now, and and I, I get it because it doesn't make a whole lot of sense there. But they're trying to set the seeds here, um, you know, that she owns a lot of posters. They made a point of saying that that contain like extinct animals and different plants she has a pet lizard even even a, mm. a family dog um and, and the fact that she is going to school like a law school or i guess was she going to law school at this point i think she wanted to i forget exactly but she yeah. she's basically doing political stuff because she basically wants to become a senator to help protect animals and stuff like that we did not see that coming whatsoever no. And I really liked it. I really liked it a lot. There was a lot in that first chapter that I, I, I like took pictures of and I was quoting because about um, she wanted to do that because she wanted to be the head of something and in charge of something. So it wasn't just like a tree hugger activist thing. It was a control style of thinking. And that that's where it, I bought it in that case. Mm -hmm. But um, later on, though, I feel like she loses that and she does get more animally and tree huggery. And that that's where it loses me, I think, because she does okay. kind of start to move away from that. But in the first couple of chapters, I, I bought it. I was OK. I was, yeah. I was once they said her motives and everything. I was like, OK, I could I could buy it buy the tree hugging stuff. Yeah. At Here, that point. Here's a little quote that kind of really establishes who Claire is and especially the Claire that we see in Jurassic World. Um, so this is from chapter one, actually. Uh, and it says, this is her basically like thinking in her head. Uh, she says, driven is what people call girls like me to, to our faces. Bossy is what people call girls like me behind our backs. Like, like it's a bad thing. Someday they won't be able to say it's a bad thing uh, because someday I'll be the boss. So Best. I thought that was pretty interesting. Yeah. Favorite. That's what I wanted about the whole thing. And we lost it after that part. It kind of got deviated away. But that's what I loved. I loved that. I loved the line about ambition. Oh, my gosh. My thumb's actually on it by mistake. About <laughs> being, being ambitious and how it's like trying to escape escape you and it and it scares you because it's a part that you can't tame and i totally get that and that's what i like about claire in the beginning without even reading this book that's what i feel from her and to have this in the book here oh, what is that i think this is in a chapter two chapter three this is in chapter three so the first three chapters are flawless in my opinion uh -huh. from and until i really i really like the realism of and they put her family. Oh my gosh, I'm jumping all over the place. My thoughts are going everywhere. <laughs> her family's in there too, so that yeah. adds another dynamic. And I like that they had a lot of her family in there. They could have skipped that completely. The detail in those first four, apparently chapters three-ish, four, four, five, um, six, seven, thirty. 
it's so good i <laughs> oh my gosh i wish it was that long um but yeah those first few chapters from the focusing on why she wants to do it as wanting to be the boss which is so good and then her ambition and then her wanting to outstretch what her family does and she her, like her sister doesn't leave the town and she's like i've never wanted to stay in the town and mm-hmm. she's always wanted to be that kind of person and that's what i love so much about claire anyway so for that to be focused on so early in the book for so many chapters that, that's yeah. everything that's perfect loved it yeah and um i really like the um the family stuff as well i thought it um yeah. it definitely continued to help set the uh story as to why like they have those interactions that they do i felt in jurassic world even though they were very minimal people still had like issues with that like moment in the film where uh you know uh her sister and and you know claire are talking on the phone about their family their mom and uh, the quotes that she has and stuff like that and and having kids and all that so i feel like they're trying to settle the dust there um and and, and she makes mention that like her sister's humor is always deceptive um and she has a, mm-hmm. a sarcastic streak so i think you can kind of apply some of that to um you know like the stuff they're talking about with kids and all that stuff in the movie yeah I mean, this whole front section there was like I felt hardcore, like inconsistent canon. Like they mm-hmm. that fits in canon. It matches all threads. Like that was that was written perfectly. But then when we get on the plane, I get a little lost. I, I lose my Claire. I lose. I lose what we're doing. I, it gets a little murder mystery love story yeah. messy for me. So. Yeah, so you know, at this point, Claire is is at college. She's leaving college. Uh, she goes back with her family for a few, and she's trying to oh, figure oh. out. Sorry, I just thought of something. Can we just just talk about um, one of my favorite things that I still remember, and I want to do actually is I think <laughs> it's whenever it's whenever um, her sister came and got her from college, and they're in the car and stuff, and then I think they stop and she t- mentions about the internship that she oh. is hoping to get yeah, yeah. and um <laughs> and she's like secretly really wanting it but she doesn't want to tell anyone that because you know that they don't they won't take it well because they don't want her to leave and there she's like we'll write something on a paper and then um like burn it and then that that's how it happens and i love that that she like secret like just smiled herself and wrote that on there like that is that's just a, a nice thing i don't know why i really enjoy that but i'm gonna do that yeah, and wasn't her day. her sister hiding it from her the whole time? Like, hey, you got this letter here. Like, yeah, you know, yeah, I yeah, knew that's at the end of one of those chapters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because um, they, they didn't want her to take that. But I really liked that. Like, that was her her goal all along. But she just kind of really wanted it and just didn't tell them that they wanted it. But she didn't even like admit to herself that she really wanted it. But she did anyway. And it it was I liked that whole dynamic. I yeah. don't know. I get that for some reason. I really she, like that. She wouldn't admit it, but you know, at the same time she had heard back from five out of six of the internships, but not mm-hmm. the big one. You know, not Mizrani Corporation. Uh she wanted this one because it was the biggest, the best. Um it was called Bright Minds and you know, basically any intern out in the world wanted to get this one. And yeah, she didn't think she had the worth at times, but um you know, little did she know that she Ooh. she gets the letter. I thought of something else. Um, this is jumping a little bit, but it does have to do with this. Um, later on in the book, you find out like why she got picked, why she was one of them that got picked. And uh-huh. I really loved, I really loved, I use this in my life now too, how um, her essay included the looking to the future and things that she stood out because everyone else said, this is what I've done. This is this is all of my accolades that I've done thus far. And, but her essay was like, this is what I can do for you. And this is what I want to do. It was all future focused. Mm-hmm. And I, you never think that way. And that, that was something that I'm thinking, Oh my gosh, I'm going to do that in real life now. So the little burning of paper and the future focus thing, like I'm taking with me in real yeah. life. Oh, well, you know, they, they definitely make a point here to say that, uh, you know, she is very focused. She's very straightforward with a lot of her stuff, maybe not with her family, but with everything else, she is taking charge, like at all times. And they, uh, you know, Tess makes a, a very big point here to say all that's the kind of stuff that she is, you know, on a path and she needs that to happen with the political stuff, with saving animals. Like, the, you know, they're driving it into our heads that she loves animals, Um and yeah. which, which I'm, you know, like I was saying before, I'm not too sure that I'm really on board with it yet because I feel, mm-hmm. I, you know, I don't want to say that this book is is just a reason to to flesh out her character in Fallen Kingdom, 
uh, just to make us buy it. Um, you know, because I feel like the films need to tell their own stories and, and need to need to connect the dots for people who are not doing these extra things like reading books or, yeah. or you know, doing all that. I, I, I don't think that's true at all. I don't think this was written just to connect Fallen Kingdom because not they know not everyone's going to read this book. Yeah. And even in that case, um, I think it would have been more animal driven if possible like the, they would have just took out a lot of the characterization stuff and a lot of drastic stuff and put just shoved it down our throats more now i felt like it was in there a lot but it wasn't shoved down my throat as much as if it were if they did want to say what as you said to connect us fully and make us really believe it like she w- wasn't working at an animal shelter or anything at this point no. i mean well but yeah she but, was still but her, her complete on. intention was animals like everything about her is animals yeah. But I think they they really wanted to jam it down our throats. I feel like they would have done it much harder hmm. and um, less characterized, but less Claire of what we know because the Claire that we know is not this. Like as we've been saying, it's so hard to believe because it's it's not. It's two different people, so it's hard to believe enough yeah. from what we're reading. Here. Yeah, and and I still I just you know we'll get into that even more. But I still don't like I just don't buy who she is in Jurassic World. Like Jurassic World is really the outlier now. Like who her character is but like we said before it's one day uh, of life you know it's really not that long of a time period uh for us to get a sense of who she actually is um so throughout this book they're making us aware that she likes animals and all that like what like i said she she owns a lizard uh they have a family dog which um i I was wondering when i saw a fallen kingdom and you see her desk the first time that we saw it together i was like oh there's a there's a dog on her on her you know desk there is that was like, a calendar i thought it was a calendar like one of those daily calendars so. that maybe but i don't think so isn't it just like a little picture in like a you know a stand-up uh, frame that's what it looked it like to so me fast. um would so have to screen cap that either way it's just it's it made a little connection for me i'm like i don't think that's i don't think it's possible that that's the same dog <laughs> but uh, that'd be interesting um and at the same time you know how much she likes this, the, the animals and all that. Her mom is basically trying to talk her out of uh, doing this internship because it's dangerous. I think any parent would probably do that um, in those days because, uh, you know, the discovery of dinosaurs was, let's see, this is 2004, so that was 1997. Uh, so it really wasn't too long ago. Um, but, you know, it's still it's still a new thing and, and people are, are afraid of these things and they think that everybody's going to die if they go to that island. Um, so basically, her mom's trying to, like, talk her out of it and, and to do something else. Get one of the un- other internships. They sound a little bit more safe. Yeah. Um, but I did like I, I did like the inclusion of, uh, you know, the Hammond stuff. There was a lot of talk about Hammond and the yeah. the, like... Uh, you know, the first time they that they saw a dinosaur. San Diego. She meant they mentioned San Diego too. Yeah, they did. Yeah, uh, like the first footage that came out of there, and it was the event yeah. of her childhood, uh, mm-hmm. which was pretty cool. And I imagine it would be. You know, if you're, you know, in middle school or something like that, and that footage comes out, and you're like, wait, what? And then like that would be the best thing ever, I think. Um, <laughs> but there was a lot of talk of of Dr. Hammond, and one of the, one of the, oh, there we go. That's one of the things that threw me for a loop is there's not really a lot of mention of a doctor in our universe here, uh, except for at the end of uh, the Lost World, which I had completely forgotten about. But uh, Clayton Fioriti pointed it out. He's like, yeah, it is said um, uh, during the, I guess, the, the telecast at the end of the Lost World, it does say Dr. John Hammond. But mm. I never really considered him a doctor. So that's that that I feel like that needs an entire episode on its own. But there was a lot of ins, uh, insistency on saying Dr. Hammond, Dr. Hammond, Dr. Hammond, which I don't know was if that was setting the, st- the floor for uh, Fallen Kingdom as well, um, because there's like a little mention in that movie that like Doc, uh, John Hammond and Benjamin Lockwood together, you know, extracted the first DNA uh, so I don't know if they're trying to like really set the floor for him being a, a legit doctor, but I don't think that's the case. He's, he's basically a money man, an entrepreneur and, and stuff like that. So I don't know, 
But, yeah, I um, didn't catch any of that. I, I, <laughs> I don't know where my brain was, but I didn't even register that. I'm trying to remember all the places Hammond was even mentioned. He was mentioned a, a good bit. In that yeah, spot, but I, I was, I was happy about that. They, they mentioned that like uh, his death caused a lot more questions than it answered. Um, mm-hmm. So yeah, I guess at that point, um, there, I think there was – wasn't there like some sort of letters that had like – uh, the opening date uh, of Jurassic World and like people were like, oh, what is this? Yeah. What is the rumors are, what are, are bound. Like, what is yeah, it? What's coming? It was May, May 20th, 2005. Was it? I don't Let's know see. why I remember that. I don't remember Hammond in there, but May 20th, 2005. <laughs> I think I, I have the notes here. That. It says 30th, May 30th. Just oh, so, 30th. So, so, yeah. I knew there was a zero. Yeah. <laughs> the two was fuzzy in my brain. Yeah. Well, there was a two there, 2005. Yeah. <laughs> you you benefited that. May 30th. Um, let me see. So, okay, my, my brain's jumping a lot. So keep going with your thoughts. Um, one of the just funny things that I, I, I noted down here in my notes, uh, Claire wanted to go buy some cargo shorts for, for Isla Nublar. <laughs> I just thought that was funny. Like, it just like... I don't know. She just... That's her go-to thing. Like, she when she tied her shirt together, she's like... I'm ready. What do you think? And in this case, she's just like, I need to get those cargo shorts. I'm going to be ready. <laughs> and her sister yeah. buys her a knife or something, right? Like didn't or bear spray? I forget bear which spray. one it was. One of those, which yeah. Comes in handy later. Yeah. I know they were like debating, tossing them. Like, well, which one should we get here? Um, but yeah. So so let's see. Moving on here. Um, so yeah, they get to I guess the uh, airport, right? So they're 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 going away, uh, and that's where she meets Justin. Um, yeah. you know, they, sure they basically, a bit. they have this like intellectual conversation. And again, I feel like it's like telling us that she is very smart. Uh, she's going into a different career, a different path than we're expecting. And she's, she's a super smart person, which I mean, I bought, I bought that anyway. So I didn't need oh, yeah. any further explanation than that because she's running, basically running a business. She's super smart. She has to be, um, oh, I want to go back a little bit here. Um, uh, Oh, where was that note? Okay, so this was um, uh, before they left, actually. I think her sister had said this, and whoever it was, I think the sister, like I said, said, maybe you'll fall for a handsome dinosaur trainer on the island. Uh, <laughs> why? Why must you do that? I know. I don't why? know. I don't know how that made the cut because it, it made my eyes roll – completely around no, in a it, circle like it made the cut because they're like haha that's cute people will think that's funny let's keep that in wink wink yeah but i'm like oh it was super no. on the nose and there was a few moments that are kind of like that as well um throughout the book but that one i feel like was the worst of them all because it's like for foresh- like serious foreshadowing like maybe you'll you'll fall for a handsome dinosaur trainer like I don't know who thinks about that. You know, like who who would have said that? That's just yeah. very specific. Um, and and for the fact that she actually does, like, so uh. I thought that was very on the nose. And that's one of those things, which is a minuscule thing. It's not a big deal in the grand scheme of things that that made me roll my eyes. But it's just one of those moments. I had to point it out. Sorry, yeah. I know, but um, yeah, it's, it's just a one good of those bit things. of those moments. Yeah, though, it's there, fine. There it gets lost in there some here, sometimes. Like, I don't remember them all, but I do know that there was a bunch of them. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see. What else we got here? Um, like I said, they're going to the island. Uh, she meets Justin. And Justin's basically, I feel like, the catalyst for um, why she doesn't connect with Owen exactly the way, you know, the, the viewers expected to. And even part of the reason why, you know, they're not together in, in Fallen Kingdom as well. Um, so I think that they're basically telling you that, you know, she went through a traumatic experience with this guy that she met on this island and she can't really commit because of that, because she's afraid of what may happen to him. But then, you know, she went through two more traumatic experiences with another dude now. So she's just that's three traumatic experiences. Yeah. yeah. With, with with dudes like that. So <laughs> how is she not like in a have the white walls around her at this point uh, if the first yeah. one bothered her that much <laughs> um 
so uh, basically by the time they get to the island um yeah, they they make mention that there's five different herbivores on the island. There's no mention of of carnivores, so you basically have the Triceratops, the Brachiosaurus, Parasaurolophus, Ankylosaurus, and the Gallimimus. Um, and they plan on opening the park with eight species altogether. Um, apparently, no photos have leaked of the new park. Um, yeah, um, and so I thought that was interesting. Is is they're setting this thing up completely and they're keeping it very secretive and that's that's basically the the plan there by saying nothing is leaked of this new park Mm -hmm. it's still very hush hush um so they're basically saying that not a lot gets out and that's basically a setup for for things later as well yeah i'm i'm i remember notes of that of Ms. ronnie like specifically saying that they stop anything from leaking and he has all these methods to keep stuff from getting out and all of that so Mm-hmm. That was brought up a lot early yeah. on. The uh, the aviaries being built, um, they make yeah. mention of the jeeps that they're in driving through like the park, the old park gates, I think, or was it the new ones? I forget. But they mentioned that it was like based on Hammond specs. Um, yeah, yeah. Right. I, they're building the I'm monorail. The monorail's not mm-hmm. done. Um, yeah, and and, you're bringing up good things. I forgot about. You're right that when they're driving in those jeeps throughout the whole building of everything. Yeah, they basically like street. they're like, here you go, guys. Here's here's the keys. <laughs> We're gonna let you guys go wherever you want, except for these areas that are marked on your uh, tablet, which I thought was awesome. There was a lot of great tech in this in this book. Oh um, yeah, their tablet maps. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, like I said, they're building a lot of things. The aviary, the the monorail is still being built, um, and they're moving these herbivores from Sorna, um, and more arriving later. I guess that summer. Um, and, and any of the access to the carnivores is basically restricted, uh, which I believe at that point might have been a T-Rex and a Dilophosaurus, uh, maybe. Um, um, and, and apparently there's compies just like throughout the park and you just got to look out. Just watch out. <laughs> they might be around. <laughs> right. Because there's many instances in this book where where Claire is, is uh, you know, once the things open up, there's there's a conspiracy. And she's she's out there, like, trying to solve the conspiracy and do all those things. And she gets very nervous. And a lot of times it comes up, she's like, oh, I hope it's not a compi or whatever. It's not as, not as like, on the nose as, uh, what do you call it, Franklin. Like, is it a T-Rex? Is it a T-Rex? But it's, <laughs> it's more like, you know, people are concerned that there's just compies wandering around. Uh, I guess they're small enough. They can go through all the, any place I they want. <laughs> How is that even happening? I, I don't know. I don't know. It seems dangerous. Um, like for someone who wants to keep their park and all of that really quiet, that's a, that's a, a liability to have a little coffee. Yeah, a l- just a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have another note here for something that's pretty on the nose as well. Uh, this one definitely makes my eyes roll almost as heavily as the other one. Um, so here's the quote here. It's going to take a special person. And a really brave one to crack the carnivore code when it comes to real connection and training. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, it, that's pretty on the nose. Not as bad as the other one, but they're basically setting you up for how special and how brave Owen is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I was like, and, oh, yeah. that's interesting. I mean, yeah. Uh, basically, he is the only one that can do this, that can handle the... Uh, intensity and the the bravery needed uh, and the connection for training. Um, so I just I had to write that one down. Um, but yeah, I don't know where we are in the story because I'm just kind of I have so many. <laughs> we're in <laughs> well, we're in order. I don't know when all this stuff happens um, that I have written down. So I'm just kind of waiting for you to hit that point because <laughs> so I, I don't really know when these happen i was very specific with my notes i I literally like put the page number the the chapter number and all that and i went went down the book and just read and wrote um i have words i I really have like just 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 separate separate (laughs) words word comma word comma that's all i have Uh, oh man i even wrote down the brachiosaurus names oh the what the brachiosaurus names oh yeah the originals olive dot and pearl Isn't that cute? Yeah. Pearl. Pearl, Pearl. and her little gyro spear. Yeah, poor Pearl. Pearl. Um, did we get to the part I don't know if we're at, if that's here in chapter eight. 
but we're, I'm just going to say it anyway. Yeah, go ahead. Whenever, just skip around. It doesn't matter. When they're moving, um, when, when they're, one of their little tasks was to like map the gyrosphere boundaries. Yeah. I, I thought that was really cool. I like that idea. Yeah, they were, they were um, you know, test subjects for a lot of stuff in this park. It, they almost felt like guinea pigs. And I feel like that was part of the uh, the intrigue uh, as to the, the conspiracy as well. Is like, oh, man, I, it's weird that they're just sending them out to be guinea pigs in a lot of these things. Like, go test the boundaries, see what you can do. But we're also going to tell you that these dinosaurs really love playing with the gyrosphere. So, so look out. <laughs> I know. I like that. Um that was kind of like a mundane thing. Like, fine, I'll go test the gyrosphere for a couple hours. Cause that's what I'm supposed to do. Like, yeah. it's just a mundane thing, but it, <laughs> it's so bizarre that that's like what you're supposed to do. Yeah, on this internship. Uh, it, that sounds like a lot of fun to me, and I, I liked the the daily life um, on the park and stuff like that. I thought it was interesting enough. Um, all the setup and all that, and testing stuff like that. I thought that was pretty interesting. Um, yeah, let me. Uh, I got a note we, here. We, yeah, go I was gonna say we skip. We skip past a bunch. I'll, I'll go ahead. What's your note? Um, I, for some reason, I wrote Mizrani climbed Everest. <laughs> <laughs> That's how specific my notes are. What? I don't know. I just what? I wanted to remember that for the future. You know, it's it's always a good thing to know that. Miss <laughs> Mizrani uh, climbed Mount Everest, um, which wow. I never would have expected. So. Um, it's a nice little nod to, uh, the lost world, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, cause there's like a little quote about Everest in there as well. well um, for but, some reason you just brought up something in my head. Oh, did I? I, I? Yeah. I don't know why it did that, but I, <laughs> it's nothing to do with that, but I didn't like really how, I think I'm trying to figure out my problem with the middle because I liked the park stuff a lot. I liked the dinosaur interactions. I liked the day to day as we've been saying, and the, the mystery thing didn't bother me. I'm trying to find my problem with my characterization with Claire, and I guess I didn't like how outdoorsy she was. Like, she was super outdoorsy. She'd, she'd be willing to do anything, jump in the dirt, move things around, get hurt, hurt doing all these things. I don't know. I don't know if I bought that either. I felt like she was too physical for that's, my taste. That's why I feel, like I, like I said, I didn't want to necessarily say it, and I don't think it's true that this was made specifically for Fallen Kingdom, but stuff like that really makes me question it is because they're trying to say that she does this out, outdoorsy stuff and because she loves the animals. So, yeah, it's definitely one of those things that um, stood out to me because we had three years worth of time to examine who Claire is based off that one to two days or whatever. So that's never the person we settled on. Um, so it is it's yeah. always a, like a little it always just throws you for a loop, I think. Yeah, it's where I lost at the middle, I believe, because she was so active and not active but just physical on everything mm -hmm. instead of intellectual and that that's where i got i didn't feel like i was reading the same character as the beginning or the end of the book or of, as the movies like that's where it yeah. just felt like a generic a gen it could have been anyone at that point well, like there, anyone could have done there, there was a specific uh i think i wrote it in here um early on in the beginning this is like one of the only times i take like notes on paper um, so if you hear me flipping around, that's why. Um, on page 23, uh, there, there's a notation that um, she doesn't really take risks. Um, so I don't know if she was just trying to change things, um, be a little different, because yeah. everything that happens on this island is her taking a risk. Everything. Yeah. And that's what I had little problems with because, again, that's beginning. That beginning is flawless. This characterization is flawless. Everything she does is flawless. That that quote there, that little thing you just said about taking risks, that's in the beginning. It's exactly how it should be. And somewhere in the middle, we we lose everything that they build up to. She, they throw away everything, and she's doing all kinds of things, and she's an adventurer and, and a, all this stuff. And I'm just lost in that. Yeah. And I liked her stuff with Wu because it kind of brought it down a little bit. Um, uh -huh. Back no, to because, the intellectual. Because, like, yeah, there's somebody she's intimidated by. Um, because I think she gained a lot of confidence once uh, once she realized that, uh, you know, I'm going, I'm the intern, uh, I got accepted at one of, like, very few people that are able to go to this park. So I think her, like, level of confidence definitely rose up until you meet people like Dr. Wu. Um, she was very still confident with uh, Mizrani as well, so that was pretty interesting. She yeah. she gave it to him. You know, like, she didn't hold back, and I think that definitely helped her case. Um, but, you know, she only really held back with, with Dr. Wu until later on in the story. 
I mean, that's honestly my favorite part of the whole book is at the end where she didn't give any Fs about either one of them. She was just <laughs> saying whatever she wanted. And yeah. that was what I was missing the whole that time. Felt real. That's, that's what I wanted the whole time. And I feel like she could have still had bits of that throughout the middle. And uh-huh. she just didn't have any at all in the middle. And all of a sudden it's where I want at the end here, but it's at the end and it's over. And I wanted that at least at least in the middle somewhere. Yeah. Yeah, so so what was that? Back on chapter two, I think it was, where where she doesn't really take risks. Then chapter five, uh, she's afraid of heights. So they're they're laying out these like issues that she has, but then straight into the next few chapters, she's taking the reins and and not looking back, you know. Yeah. So um and it is definitely interesting. And then um chapter eight. Uh, really tying into Fallen Kingdom. So again, it's one of those things that like makes me question. Um, it's the first time she saw a dinosaur. And it yeah. gives you so much context for that moment in the movie, which I think is great. And it's the same dinosaurs. Not yeah, Maybe not, maybe not was, literally the same dinosaurs, but the same species. Yeah, that was on purpose. Like You could tell that was on oh, purpose. Yeah. We, I mean, we watched the movie first and then read the book. And then... That's true, yeah. um, and then when you go back and rewatch the movie, it makes more sense that way. And it even makes the Brachiosaurus or was there Brachiosaurus on the dock? Uh huh. Yeah. Oh yeah. So that even puts it in context because you wonder was that one of the Brachiosauruses in the book? We, we don't have any idea. Uh, yeah. Well, did they? But, I forget. Did they mention if I think Pearl was she the younger one? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and and that, I, so sorry. Go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, and that that actually on my my viewing after reading the book, I was like, oh, I hope that's true. I hope it's that one. I hope it's the little one that was playing with the jars here because that would just kill me more. And her reaction on the boat was so good, and that would just be everything. Yeah, yeah, give it definitely. I got. I don't even think I thought of it that way. Um, that kind of context. I was just thinking in in broad terms, like, oh, we get more backstory with these Brachiosaurus that are from because these uh, was it. Was it? I don't know because Pearl was young. The other three were older, I guess. Um, but I don't remember Dot. I don't remember which one that was. But I, I think remember. Agnes and Agnes and Olive were the originals. They were there first, I think. Okay, let me let me bring it up here because page ninety four is where we get the introduction of the Brachiosaurus. Um, you are so prepared. This is wonderful. <laughs> so <laughs> I am not prepared. Dot and Pearl are the younger of the four. Um, okay, so yeah, yeah, so um, I don't think there's any uh, get our teenage brachiosaurus, so teenage in 19 or 2004. Um, so yeah, I mean, uh, they, they weren't too old, so the other ones must have been the old ones. Uh, what was it? Um, it was A- Agnes, uh, Agnes and, and Olive. Olive. So, I yeah. mean, I don't think it was one of those on the dock. I think it must – I think in my head canon, I would make it Pearl. Um, yeah. And I've that done definitely that already. Would, yeah, that definitely would add a lot of context because there mm-hmm. was that connection with the entire crew on, on this island uh, when they were trying to do all the stuff to make her happy um, and fix the uh, sickness and all that stuff. So, yeah, that would, that would definitely – like you can see the sadness in Claire's eyes and also that um, – triceratops scene because the first dinosaur that she ever sees is a triceratops they're kind of introducing the baby to the uh the the grouping there um and she described it as breathtaking earth shattering life changing and you know what in the in the fallen kingdom here the only baby dinosaur we see is a baby triceratops so that's like a straight out of the book reference yeah yeah it, it yeah i know it, it's exactly so that's one of those notes that they're like well if you're going to show her the dinosaur for the first time make sure it's this one <laughs> so yeah, i think that was perfect straight out but um and i would guess though that after after this book ended and Claire became in her position, she kept track of all the dinosaurs that obviously that she probably knew of. So she would know what oh, Pearl for sure. grew into. So yeah. I want like that that's something I want to like ask somebody this. I think like there's been people, I don't know if it's Colin or Bayona or someone or somewhere have been discussing what Brachiosaurus that is. And I don't know if anything's been confirmed. I think a couple of them have said it's not one from Jurassic Park, which I get um, one of the originals anyway, because it wasn't old enough. Maybe I don't really know 
what old no, I believe, Brax sources look like. I believe they said it was one of the originals. Um, Did they say that? I thought that was debunked. See, I don't know. No, I'm, stuff's I, all I, over the place. Again, I, 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 have, place. I have the notes here. Uh, so <laughs> let's do this on the fly. <laughs> um, let's see. Where did I write that down? This is... Um, uh, oh, maybe I didn't write this part down. Um, but I'm pretty sure somebody said that. <laughs> that's that's not very, um, you know. <laughs> Good citation. I'm yeah, pretty the, sure I'm pretty somebody, sure said, somebody that. said that. That's not very uh, meaningful, I know. But um, yeah, it was said somewhere, I, I believe. But maybe on Twitter. Uh, but I didn't write that down. I wrote down a bunch of other notes, though, of things that they've said recently. Just to kind of so, stay. I, I got to figure that one out. But um, yeah. Yeah. So it's canonized that one of the original Brachiosaurus was the one on the dock. Is that what we're that's what we're to right now? Debating, yeah, and that's what I th- mm, I believe I somebody not. said that. I'm I'm pretty positive somebody said that. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. I know. No, yeah, they definitely said that. Whoever it was said that it, it's the exact one that we saw in that moment. So it's literally doing the same move that it did 25 years later or earlier. I don't know. Honestly, I'd feel more if it was Pearl than one of the originals yeah just because well, it seems cheese tastic to be one of the originals well yeah uh, definitely um and that's one of the things that i've been constantly saying is i don't really like the fact that um like i love colin and i love bayona and all i know everybody out there that's worked on this stuff but i i don't love the fact that once the movies are released that they just head to twitter or some random interview and say things like that and uh, it changes things and you may, you have to think about things differently um, and they don't put those things in the movie. They make they make it just for the – after the fact, it's just like this little detail that they throw into an interview that you're like, oh, that's weird that they just said it here. Like I don't know. If it was it was meant to be one of those originals, there should have been some line and somewhere or anywhere um, to and, – and not just for that moment, for, for a lot of moments in that movie. Yeah, I know. But that's – that's another problem yeah. for another day. Yeah. Speaking of though that movie though, because there is a moment in that movie where, um, you know, the the crew that went to the island um, is traversing through the jungle, and then they end up at Main Street right before they see the Brachiosaurus, and they they uh, Claire and Owen are basically having this moment between each other um, as they're looking at the destructed you know Main Street that it's mm-hmm. it's torn to shreds, it's overgrown. And they basically like have this weird connection that you can sense. Not much. I don't think much is said there, um, except for like you know, and some good ones uh, when talking yeah. about the, the moments. So they're being really sentimental. And I wanted to go back here because I skipped over this before um, when Claire was leaving school back in chapter two. Um, her sister's like, "Are you ready? Like, do you want to say goodbye? Do you want to like make a little bit more out of this than you need to?" And she's like, "No, I'm good." She's not very sentimental, and they make a point of saying that uh, uh, there, that yeah. she is seemingly cold, but just not sentimental. So it's it's not that she's non caring and all that stuff. It's just that she doesn't you know hold on to things as much as other people do. She's not sentimental. So I thought that was an interesting twist there because she is sentimental in Fallen Kingdom in that moment. You know, she has that that nostalgic yeah. feeling for that uh, for those times uh, and starting from now. You know, this book. Um, um, to the end of I'll, Jurassic World. All right, let me let me let me think through this in my brain. Folks. <laughs> so I I don't know if I see it as sentimental and Fallen Kingdom. I see it as like like bad memories, like the dude said, like just traumatized memories that they haven't thought about in a while. I don't really know if it's oh this is what happened to my place or I loved my place or whatever my park. I feel like it's more bad memories deal. So it's not oh. really sentimental. Um. So you think but she's I, going bad memories and, and Owen's going yes. more good in Sentiment. that sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I don't know. Yeah. I, I just kind of vibed that they were um, – you know, it was sentimental to me. Like they were just thinking about the lost memories there. Um, but maybe it's the here, other way. Here's why. Because I really like both parts and I feel like – I really like how she was – how she's in the book saying she doesn't hold on to things and she's not sentimental. I like that a lot and I liked that exchange in the truck. And so I feel like I can't like both if she was sentimental in the truck. And I d- never took it that she was sentimental in the truck. I did take it as um, scared of just 
remembering all of that and he gives her a look that's totally different she has like a scared look and he has like a a sentimental look Mm -hmm. so i i truly i think it's that because i did like the stuff in the book and it wouldn't match right if she was sentimental i don't think that she was okay but i like that moment in the trap yeah i like that moment a lot yeah me too i I really love that moment um sentimental for me (laughs) there you go i I remember how nice that street looked (laughs) (laughs) back in the Um, you know those many years ago (laughs) yes (laughs) There's a few moments um, in these next chapters here that are a little on the nose, not nearly as bad. Um, but uh, Claire is is kind of upset about corporate sponsorship, which she, yeah. she doesn't seem too right. too caring about um, in Jurassic World. Um, but you know, it is the way it is. It needs to happen. It's a necessary flaw, I guess. But um, there's that, and I then mean, at one point in the Innovation Center, she can't bring herself to walk through the hologram of the Raptor. Yeah. Excellent points you just mm-hmm. brought up. Excellent points because um, I had a thought and it's gone. But I, I, I those two, yeah, those 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 are excellent points. Go on with your point because yeah. I lost. I, I don't know. Say. I mean, it's it's just interesting, like the little details. So I don't know where this stuff came oh, from. Like, the, the, uh, if it was Tess, like sh- huge shout out to Tess for that because little things like that show the change. In her character, um, you know, because she can't bring herself to walk through it and, and stuff like that. And then in Jurassic World, she is just all business and doesn't care about that kind of thing. She just walks straight through it. And they make a point to to mention that here. I love those points in this book. Those are some of my favorite things that they did, those little touches like that. However, uh-huh. a few times it did kind of hit me over the head too hard and i was like they're working too hard to show opposites like they're working too hard to to pull me in the other direction and be like no look she's this way this whole time like like sometimes it felt too much and too too to the other way and they're they're trying too hard sometimes but those moments like i love the hologram thing a lot and a couple of them really worked for me but a bunch of i felt just pulled away like they're trying way too hard to say no 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 she's different she's yeah. different she's adamant like the corporate sponsorship um that was that probably it was a little on the edge because it, i'm like it's, that's it's not too bad a little much it's just like know. you know she she realizes she's upset about it um but, you know, at the end of the day, she realizes this is a business and this is what has to happen. And, I, you know, she I don't really feel like she fully buys it in Falling uh, – not Falling Kingdom, uh, in Jurassic World as well because it's it's played off as a joke in that moment as yeah, well. So it's, it's you, you know, she's do. just – she says it very – uh, theatrically, you know, Verizon <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wireless presents the Indominus Rex. Like she's like, she's, she's yeah, kind of ugh like, as well, you know. She's like, sorry, but I got it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, and um, so yeah, th- I don't mind those. Those are nice touches. Um, this one not so much. Uh, Doctor Henry Wu says, "Would any of this exist without him?" Uh, which is basically, I feel like he just he just can't stop saying that. That's just you know? his favorite thing to say. <laughs> He's, He's like, I created every this. movie it's and everything. Mine. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> guys, we know, you, dude, we know you did this. It's all you. I got it. You know? Like, even in Fallen Kingdom with Blue, he's like, no, I made this. It's mine. This is my work. And when he's talking to Eli Mills, he's yeah. like, this is my stuff. I was here. And we're like, we get it. We get it, dude. He's been saying the same lines for yeah. like 20 years. Well, I like the fact that... Um, you know, in this and then, you know, in Jurassic Park, in this, in Jurassic World, he's the guy in charge. Like he – nobody's really questioning him that much. Ms. Ronnie goes in his office in Jurassic World and he's not having it. You know, he's he's not taking it from the boss. He's te- he's like yeah. telling him how it is. You know, he's like, uh, you know, I made these things. This None of this would exist without me. Um, but by the time Fallen Kingdom comes around – He's he's like falling behind. He he no longer is a doctor, um, and Mills is like trashing him. He's like, you know, throwing throwing him around, yeah. yelling at him the whole time. And then basically they're not listening to his point about selling the Ind- Indoraptor <laughs> and all that. And basically by the end of it, you know, he's knocked out. Um, but yeah, so I, I like that progression of his character. I think that's pretty interesting. One thing I really liked in this book um, was the interaction between Mizrani and Wu a lot of times. I really liked how both of them were done in this book. I really liked how Mizrani was done in this book because it, it, it could have kind of – they're very specific people. And it could have could have got lost early on because, you know, years before the park and such, they could be different and they could have a growth 
problem as well or whatever. But I mean, they, they, she says, did them very well. I really liked their interaction together, mm-hmm. separate with other people. I like those two a lot in this book. Yeah. Like, they were refreshing. Every time they came on there, I was like, oh, this is, this is good. This is done well. I, I'm enjoying their their parts yeah and for being a newcomer to the series tess um she really like nailed these these characterizations of these characters like it felt like dr Wu, it felt like Ms. Yeah. Ronnie, and for majority of this thing it felt like claire um but I, I i got a great sense of that i think she really built this world very well um dr Wu was just a complete jerk most of this book which is who he is yeah. Uh, Ms. Ronnie was like an aloof millionaire, you know, mm-hmm. or a billionaire, or whatever he is. Um, and yeah, so I, I loved how they were characterized here. And Wu was basically like, I don't want anything to do with these interns. Like, get them away from yeah. me. I, I told you I don't want this to happen, which is basically a lot of the stuff that he does throughout these uh, movies as well. You know, he's just a pompous jerk. So, yeah. Yeah. I'm really excited to get to the end whenever we're talking about that because I'm I'm in love with that end like a lot. I just wish it lasted longer. So we won't get there yet, but I'm excited to get there. <laughs> I have no idea where we are at this point. We're, we're a bunch of chapters in. Somewhere. I have no um, idea what's coming next. Can but... I can I just mention a few little things? I don't yeah, know where yeah. they are in the book, but um, the, back to the hologram, like somewhere in the in the point here in the book where they're in the innovation center and we're still building and everything and they come across the the velociraptor hologram and i like that claire went to Mizrani and was like that would be scary for people it should be like herbivores it should be uh, yeah. a brachiosaurus and stuff or patasaurus or, or us one of those long necks and then <laughs> in the movie we see herbivores yeah on program to walk around there fantastic yeah and like the, the like the raptor and and lobsters like the carnivores are in the system, but it's like the herbivores that are with the kids and stuff. Wasn't wasn't and Claire thought, Claire was the one who triggered the Dilophosaurus in Jurassic World, wasn't she? No, it was Gray. Was it Gray? Yeah, oh, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, well, I don't know how he did that. I forget. Um, but just kind of smacked it. Just smacked it. Yeah. So the the <laughs> yeah. functionality was there, but. Um, I, I did like that point as well. I forget where that comes in. Yeah, I didn't know either. So I just mentioned it with the hologram topic. Mm-hmm. But I, I really liked that. I, I sent that to Josh and I was like, oh, look at this. this is, I hope this was intentional. I, I just really liked it a lot. Um, another point that's just a little piece is when they had their maps on their tablet, like Mr. DNA was talking oh. to them <laughs> on their tablet. <laughs> so fantastic. <laughs> That was cool, too. Yeah, and that's basically who he's become. You know, he was basically the storyteller in uh, Jurassic World as well, you know, on the little screens and holograms there. So that was pretty interesting. They they, they kept that thematic element uh, throughout this book, and that was nice. I like that they, yeah. they realized, like, John Hammond created a great character here, and we, we need to continue this in Jurassic World, uh, which is interesting because, like, it's tying it back to the old park, and and you know Claire doesn't really want anything to do with that, as she notates to uh, um, Lowry. You know, you're gonna take that shirt off or get rid of it. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's you know insensitive. But then they also have Mr. DNA like running the show in the Innovation Center, so it's funny. Yeah, you know. Um. Well, since we're here doing little tidbits, I have another little tidbit. One last <laughs> tidbit. I think that's a tidbit somewhere in here in this book somewhere someone mentions one of the interns it was a girl i think mentions how she she wanted to be the mosasaurus trainer or she wondered who trained the mosasaurus or something because they were talking about a little bit about the mosasaurus i think Wu was talking a little bit about um developing that and they were like oh, excited about it. And he was like oh i can't see anything and that's all that was in there but i think one of the girls um I think her name was Amanda, said how she wants to train the Mosasaurus. And I thought to myself, oh, wouldn't that be awesome if that was the Mosasaurus trainer in the movie? But it's not. It's been debunked. Oh, man. Because <laughs> I think we tweeted um, Courtney James Clark. I'm like, what's the name of your character? And she was like Sarah or something. It wasn't Amanda. Like, in Yeah, the book. it was definitely Sarah. Yeah, that's right. I was sad. I was sad. Yeah. So I'm like, oh, man, that would have been the best connection ever. <laughs> well, maybe maybe uh, Amanda tra- uh, trained Sarah for her job. So I hope. a little I connection. Hope so. That'd be awesome. <laughs> but oh, sorry, another thing. No, go ahead. Because I don't have. That's what I was going to say. I don't have a ton more notes to be honest. Because oh, because I like do. you were saying with the with the middle of the book, um, there wasn't a lot of of canon touches. It was a lot of of stuff that was made specifically for this story. Um, so I don't have a ton there, but yeah, go ahead with your, uh, your, your point. Um, 
my my oh my gosh i just this is weird the book keeps opening it just opened to like the mosasaurus page i'm oh, actually looking book, at it right huh? now i know wait what's what the quote where does it say uh they're talking about the mosasaurus anime amanda's here um she's like yeah she's she's freaking out about the mosasaurus yeah i wish her name was amanda in the in the thing that's really cool okay um anyway my point was that i kind of wanted to see where the rest of these interns went in the park like i would have liked to seen a here's where they are now kind of thing like maybe that's what the not the the epilogue i guess they're called of of claire's um for after talk that i wanted i i would have liked maybe to hear where the other interns interns ended up because obviously a couple of them one died and one they the other one's like in trouble blah blah but there's still there's 12 of them so there's still a good amount that did this internship so i wanted to know if like claire hired them or she they got hired later on and they were trainers of things later on or if they stayed on the island and they or they moved on i kind of wanted to know what happened to the other interns mm-hmm. and it didn't touch on that at all no yeah like like um like we keep saying that the book was just wrapped up a little too quick. Um, mm-hmm. But the, 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 the conspiracy is really like the main crux of this story, I think. Um, and it, you know, it, it surrounds like her daily life uh, and then like, it just wraps up. Um, but so Claire finds this notebook, right? Like under her bed and mm-hmm. it's the property of is, uh, and she's kind of like assuming what, what did she, what was the name that she's assumed is, um, I forget, uh, Isabel, but it was a yeah. little different. It, 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 I forget. Um, but, Something uh, like that. yeah, well, let me see actually one. The Izzy is, yeah, but it was, um, I was like, how did she jump to that conclusion? That seems a little interesting. <laughs> um, 140 something 140 oh man 136 i think oh oh the mosasaurus is on 205 if anyone listening to this cares which they probably do not i'm just sitting here looking through uh through through books so yeah who knows um i don't know I don't know where it was. Never mind. Forget that point. Um, but yeah, she finds this notebook, and there's a there's a mention of uh, I think uh, Doctor Wu uh, mentioned it uh, right around here actually about a first batch. Um, now now I lost my place with that one as well. So <laughs> of course, but um, yeah, here it is. So I guess they're, they're talking like to um, somebody, and he said, "I suppose these interns might be better than the." train wreck first batch um and she, they're like wondering what this first batch is and, and they're confused about you know who who this is is <laughs> um and there's this whole mystery uh regarding like whether there was other other interns there and a lot of people are acting pretty shady beverly and jessica specifically um so yeah there's a lot going on a lot of intrigue a lot of you know stuff like that but I don't know. Uh, what did you think about the the sinister plot twist um, throughout all this? Um, I don't know. I, I felt like it, it it didn't go where I thought or wanted it to go. It kind of just went somewhere. And I'm like, oh, OK. And then it got a little weird and and not as um, like threatening as I thought. And because I didn't like how they kept. I guess this is what mystery books do, but they kept trying to like throw you off the track and stuff. And that Wyatt dude had nothing to do with anything really that much. But um, <laughs> I just felt like a, a too a slow burn that was way too slow on it because you'd go like a whole chapter and thing without even mentioning anything really specific to that journal or her or that girl. So and then all of a sudden it would pop up again, then it would just kind of go away again. I'm like, well, what we're, we're talking a lot about like the gyrospheres we're talking a lot about triceratops and all, all the little dinosaur things happening but then i'm thinking well, what about this sinister plot that was mentioned like a couple chapters ago and we forgot about it oh here it's back now and it's gone again and mm-hmm. it didn't all accumulate is that a word until the Acc- very accumulate. end here is that know. a word that's an interesting uh, it i don't is, know how i think i've heard that it, before <laughs> it is now it is a word now <laughs> but you understand what it means from class. oh yeah yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> so context clues are fun so at the end here um 
I, I, it's another thing that I felt rushed. I felt that was rushed, and I felt the whole Velociraptor thing was rushed, and I felt the whole transition was rushed. And I don't know when that starts in these chapters. Because, um, what, there's 31 chapters? Is that right? Something like that. 30, yeah. 30, 30, 31. Yeah, 31 chapters. And I feel like when the Velociraptor comes in and stuff starts to come together, it is way late in the game. And I would have liked to seen that much earlier. That's why I call the middle part filler because it's enjoyable filler, like with the with the gyro stuff and the um and the pearl stuff. I just feel like that was a little too long for what we got like cut in the back end. I mean it could yeah. stay in there as long as we had more stuff in the back. But okay. We didn't have stuff in the back. So that, that Pearl stuff maybe could have been cut short. So we could have got more on the wrapping up of the conspiracy and um, the whole Velociraptor stuff. Yeah, it's interesting. There's a lot going on in this story. And maybe that's why it's not it's not so focused in the middle part. Um, because this is a story about finding out who Claire is and where she goes. How she ends up, who she is. Um, it's also about... Uh, you know, a relationship. And then you also have um, the story about the sinister plot and also like the daily life, um, Mm -hmm. you know, just doing tasks. So there's a lot there. And then there's also the Brachiosaurus stuff, um, whether it's, you know, finding the right uh, toys, I guess, for her to play with and, and to calm these dinosaurs down so that they're not batting around the gyrospheres for guests, but also the Brachiosaurus storyline where they're trying to like, um, you know, solve the, uh, the, the, I guess the sickness the and stuff LG, like that. The LG stuff. Yeah. yeah. That's, and that's part of the novel or the novel, the notebook that was found mm-hmm. under the, the bed. Um, so, but she's like connecting that to the plot, the sinister stuff, but it's also mm-hmm. really doesn't really have a lot to do with it and all that. But, um, so there's a lot so, of stuff going on here. I have a question. So I'm trying to remember, actually. In the back end here, those two interns were, like, stealing stuff to pay for that girl's sister's medical bills or something. Yeah. How did the sinister plot end now? Like, it feels like that was a totally different sinister thing not associated with the journal. Well, like that, it wasn't. That yeah, a little it wasn't. Rushed it it wasn't uh, connected at all. I don't think you know yeah. it, because the the notebook threw her off because the, the Wyatt guy is like giving these rumors about uh, the original, like the first batch of interns that were there training and doing all that, and and Claire thought we're part of the first batch. We we are the first batch. There hasn't been any others. Um, so there's th- that's part of the initial intrigue is mm-hmm. like what happened to them? Was everybody paid off? Um, and who is this is Izzy or uh, whatever she is? Um, like, where did she go? Because she died. They researched her. They find out she dies. And maybe Ms. Ronnie's not the nice guy that I assume he is and all that stuff. So that that's pretty intriguing on on its own right. Um it, that could have been the sinister plot line, and it turns yeah, out to be not was. much. You know, it could it, it could have just turned out to be not much at all. And it turns out, yeah, maybe you know she died in a hurricane. You know, she tried to stay out, but uh, got caught, and uh, everybody had already left and all that. And she just it just naturally died, like it just happened. Um, and Ms. Ronnie, yeah, he sort of covered it up, but you know, it was all for the good of of, of everybody, I guess, in that sense. But the real. Uh, a sinister plot was was these two, yeah, the uh, the the twins, right? Um, yeah. What was it, Eric so, and Tanya? Is it Eric? Yeah. Um, and yeah. yeah, they they basically, uh, yeah, they were basically stealing information and supplies and different, like the um, the healing uh, the solution oh, or whatever was cool it was. Stuff. Yeah. yeah. There's a lot. Like I said, there's a lot of interesting tech in this in this book and i i thought that was cool because like they have things that the rest of the world doesn't and mm-hmm. the rest of the world would pay a lot of money for things like this um and that's part of this is because like they need to help save their sister and it's a compelling storyline on its own as well because you can feel for them they're they're kind of sympathetic um you know villains uh, they're not really yeah. villains but they're they're bad guys sympathetic bad guys in that sense because they're trying to ultimately help save their sister, but they're really trying to take down this park. And it just shows how easy you can exploit this park, whether it's Dennis Nedry or or, or these mm-hmm. two here. 
Yeah, I had, I had no problem with that. That was fine. And But it was just weird that there was like that slow burn of that con- conspiracy thing. And then all of a sudden at the end here, that's all forgotten. And we have a totally different problem that came out of nowhere that's going to be solved in like two chapters. Mm-hmm. I don't know. That that seemed weird to me. Um, I liked it, I guess. I mean, I didn't hate it. I, <laughs> I didn't mind it. I don't know. I, I'm feeling different about it because it just came out of nowhere. And, I, and it went by it was like oh my gosh it was like a fallen kingdom moment where it went by so fast and it was like non-stop all of a sudden i'm like whoa wait a minute like (laughs) where are we right now because that was just crazy i i enjoyed it uh the the suspicion and all that stuff and her um you know basically trying to figure out what was going on i thought that was pretty interesting like because there was a lot of moments where they could get caught um and they'd be basically kicked out of this program and they don't want to get caught you know they want to do things right and then people start to catch on um and people don't seem like good guys and stuff like that so she's very suspicious and and I liked a lot of that stuff. Um, you know, the sneaking around was a lot of fun, uh, whether it was like her and Justin or, or herself. Um, there was a moment where she was like um, in the uh, some shed or something, like counting tranquilizers and stuff. Mm-hmm. And that's what I'm talking about, like the compies and stuff. She's like, I don't know if there's a like, like dinosaur in here with me. or But it turns yeah. out to be there's people in the other room. And then she's suspicious about them and all that. Um, and then like – the entire like uh, heading out in the gyrosphere, I guess, to the uh, waterfall to kind of get that stuff and figuring out the schedule of the other uh, rangers or whoever's out there and stuff. Mm-hmm. So it was a lot of fun. I, I really liked that. But then, like I said, it really didn't turn out to be anything about that. And by the time you get to the realization as to what's happening, uh, I'm like, wait, what? What just happened? Yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, these pe- you- these two just turned out of nowhere and they're climbing a fence or doing something. Like I was kind of lost at that point. Um, so it definitely, I, I, that's one of those moments I need to reread and kind of slow down and figure out what exactly happened here because it just came out of nowhere, blindsided me with the whole Raptor thing and the, the fences and, and they all ended up in there in the, like there was four of them, I think in there at one point. Um, so yeah, it was all a bit crazy. Um, it kind of, yeah, that came out of nowhere at the end and it was like really fast. I like that part. I just wish that it went longer. I just, that's why I'm like, you could have taken some of the Brachiosaurus stuff out if you didn't have enough space to fill in the end. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Um, what do I have? Um, I don't know if we're here yet, but I'm just going to mention it. Um, the T-Rex scene. Yeah. Did you, did you see that Tess mentioned that that originally wasn't in there? And when they were, like, proofreading it, they are like, oh, we're missing the T-Rex. So she, like, wrote in that bit. Yeah, I think Did I remember her, that? yeah, mentioning that, yeah. That, that's, that was, that's that cool. Was, that shocked me because that fits so well and so perfectly. And one, that was one of my favorite things, like, all the references in there with the flair and everything. And for that not to originally have been in there, thank goodness that they, they said, hey, <laughs> write this in there. Because I think that's one of the things that fit perfectly and it feels right. Yeah. Oh, definitely. There, yeah. So. Yeah, I liked yeah, uh, I liked all the me. the intrigue behind like uh, where's the carnivores and stuff like that, and they don't want these interns anywhere near them. And then just so it turns out that like, hey, you want to tag along with me and go, you know, over to see the Rex. Um, and and the the best part about the Rex was the fact that they called her Rexy and they settled yeah. the debate. Her name is Rexy. Get over it. That's what it is. <laughs> I know a lot of people else. are still on the Roberta side, but <laughs> that was never a thing. Yeah. Let's let's nope. forget about that. That was like something completely different there. It's Rexy in the original novel. Muldoon says so, and they say it here again, calling her Rexy. Thank you so much, Tess, for settling the debate. <laughs> it's over. <laughs> there you go. No question. There it is. There it is. Um, I have no idea when this actually happens in the book, so I'm just going to mention this as well. There was a bit where... Claire was talking to Mr. Mizrani. No, I don't know if it was Mr. Mizrani. I think it might have been. I it was Wu. About that ruthless talk. How you have to be you're the ruthless or or she was like i am ruthless or something it was like um when she was oh, first yeah. talking to him at that table at the dinner at like the first dinner yeah um i wish i knew where that was didn't was um, like about justin caught on ruthless. and he was like oh you just gave me chills basically like that was pretty awesome yeah i don't remember where that was it oh, was pretty early no idea, on either. it was pretty early on because it was whenever they had their first was it the first dinner. one I think because she rotated through with him first. 
I think I remember being excited that oh good I was like oh good it um we're gonna get this early on we're gonna get this one first. All right, so I might if if bear with us here. Well, I'll I'll try to take a look because I think it might be around this section, um, a hundred and like ten or so. Um, Yeah, I'm I'm on one sixteen, so I think we're around in the right area. Yeah, here's Mizrani, and uh, let's see. Mizrani, this is just us oh, here flipping we are. pages. You got it? No, it's like, um, I'm I'm close. Because here's the part where he's saying about her essay. He said everyone else took the essay question as a challenge to explain some part of their past, but you wrote about the future. Not just your future, the future. But in an, uh, looking onward instead of inward, you ended up revealing much more to me about yourself and how you think. So that that's um, where he got her got her essay and why he liked her so i really like that for a lot yeah. um it's somewhere in here it's somewhere i don't know if it's in the first one or not the um the line that she gives is uh, it i don't remember and it might even be brought up again at the end i don't know but i liked that talk about ruthless i wish i could find it again um because that would be telling if that was in the beginning or the end huh? i don't know and and he he was like trying to discourage it. He's like, no, you don't want to be. Oh, in here this. it is. It's... Here I found it. Oh, good. Page one eleven. So, oh. um, let's see. Yeah, basically. There you are. Oh, yeah, you're right in the so middle good. there. You're right. You're right. <laughs> Maybe I'm oh, a ruthless right. girl. There it is. There it is. Talking um, about the politics because you know he's basically yeah. like politics is a ruthless game. Hmm. I I love this so much. Um, this whole section because it was more solidifying of what we got in the beginning it reminded me very much of the beginning chapters of what i like so much and uh-huh. this talk is is so important i like that it was just the two of them and he was talking about her ambitions and what she wants to do and her thoughts and he was trying to distract her away from doing that kind of thing um and he was like why do you want to do this and he's like so you want to change the world and and she was saying how much she why 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 she wants to do political science for one and um and then, yeah, and then he's like, noble goal, but though politics is a ruthless game. And then she's maybe a ruthless girl. Like, I liked it. And then I think that came out again at the end somewhere. Hmm. Yeah, I don't remember. Um, yeah, yeah, I don't know. But I really like that whole part. And if, if people have read the book, probably know this of what we're talking about. But, um, yeah, I, I think that came up again because he just he can't figure her out. Or, or the ruthless stuff came out somewhere maybe in the middle where she was questioning it mm, i don't remember but i really liked that part a lot i really i know i know it was brought up again i really like that i like that callback i like internal struggles things as you, as we've talked about many times i like internal struggles and confident questions and not really being confident and ambitious for something but then being like second guessing a little bit mm-hmm. or having people try to deter you away from that and you're like no i know this but then you're like well maybe i don't i like that a lot and i feel like there was a lot of that in here especially on that page and then further in the back so those are that was my favorite moments there so i, I like that table a lot and then um are we going to the back Can we go to the back Can we go yeah. to the end yeah let's do it let's do it i'm, I'm sitting here looking at okay. the uh back uh, not the last few pages it. but like no. the, the entire raptor sequence um really confused me um it, it was kind of hard to understand for me um they just how did they end up in there do you remember um yeah they they followed there was smoke or something because like the transformer like blew up or something because the eric guy was trying to turn off the sensor so he can oh, yeah, get yeah. something and then like they saw smoke in the back and um like they were, went for fire extinguisher i don't know if something was on fire it might have been a fire yeah i think there was like a fire remembered. yeah yeah because she was like remembered early on how they were talking about if there's a fire that's like terrible so she was like oh crap so we better go investigate that um yeah, it's on here. It's actually three yeah, thirty five. So yeah, they're like fooling around with the uh the gate there and it just opens up and they basically go in. Um She remembers like the code though. She remembers yeah, be- the code. Because I think that was from when they were in the Rexy paddock or whatever. Um I think yeah, she like, that remembered Beverly's code. One, right? There wasn't like a safety paddock or an emergency paddock something. or something. I don't remember. Yeah, it was something like that. They yeah, she just basically remembered the code, I think. Um but it was basically like 
just a all out like fight and running and hiding and and all kinds of stuff in this paddock. Um, so it must have been a big paddock because um, yeah, it was hard there, to visualize. It, it was wasn't it? It exactly was. where they were mm-hmm. and what was happening, and because there wasn't enough description, and I was trying to figure out what what they were what it looked. I still don't really know what it fully looked like in my brain. I still don't really get what the two patents look like or what the top look like. I still don't really understand it. It yeah. could just be me. We I, don't I really might not be able to read. But. We don't really have that to visualize. You know, we don't really have big raptor paddocks. We have like very small raptor paddocks, which you uh, like, you, you go in there, you're dead. <laughs> like there's no chance you're going to get out of there. Um, so it is kind of confusing, but they, they have that contact with the raptor. Um, and it turns out, I think the, the twins get out fine. Um, yeah. and then at one point, uh, doesn't didn't Claire? Oh no no! Uh, Justin basically sacrificed himself for Claire and like ran a different yeah. direction. Basically got the Raptor after him, and then she went and hid. She found that like cash because, which was a great detail I, I found in the book that throughout the island they have these caches of of um, weapons and things like that, tasers and and tranquilizers, I guess. Um, that you can find out there just in case because there might be the chance where you might need to find this and open it up and, and fight back. Um, so she did. She found it. She, she, um, it, it reminded me uh, and connected those dots of for Fallen Kingdom because, you know, you, I know that moment yeah. that you don't really love, but uh, the roof scene, mm-hmm. you know, she's very capable. Um, and I think that's part of that realization is, oh, she's so capable, capable because she has that. Um, history i guess and somewhere in this book she mentions how she knows how to shoot a rifle i think i believe you're right yeah i don't remember mm-hmm. where that was i think um maybe it was something with her with her dad was she because uh, i know yeah. she was closer with her dad than she was with her mom um but another interesting point here she covers herself in mud um which i thought was like a, a little callback to the deleted scene with yeah. the dinosaur poop right <laughs> and like why would she know to do that here but not um, in Jurassic World at the end there where it's going crazy. Like, where's her survival skills there? In, in, to here. In deleted scenes, <laughs> that's about it. <laughs> it was there, then, but, I mean, like, not, you know? But she but still seemed then, aloof in that deleted scene, you know? Yeah. I don't know. That That's a little irky to me as well. She's, she's very capable and survival mode in this book and I don't know if Claire's really that way. She might want to be that way, but I don't know if she is. And she was a little bit too much for me. Hmm. But I guess you got to do what you got to do. Um, so, yeah, so she's she's in here. And I feel like there was some point – she uses the, the bear spray at one point. So it was like the raptor was after her, then it was after him, then it was after her. It was like bouncing back and forth, yeah. I think. And, and um, the velociraptor is a very cunning hunter, so I can't imagine that she could hide – very easily, but she did. She managed to, you know, like I said, cover herself in mud and kind of stay away from this thing for a little while. And, uh, you know, she finds Justin dead or, you know, die, he di- died from like, I guess, internal damage because he got attacked. Yeah. Um, and that's that, you know, that that's a pretty good explanation for me as to why, you know, she doesn't want to have that connection with Owen. I didn't even connect that with Owen at all, actually, no? until you mentioned it in this podcast. Yeah, I didn't even think of that. I mean, I know they were trying to hint that a lot, but I, I don't know. I just wasn't thinking about that at all. Mm-hmm. Um, but the death here happens on 352 at the yeah. end of chapter 28. And I really liked it. I cried, I have to say. I did cry. I didn't think I'd care that much. So I didn't really care for the dude the whole time. I just kind of <laughs> thought he was in the way. But then here, I, I did cry. I don't I don't know why. What part? I don't know what part I cried, but I did. I don't know. I was on the plane. I did cry on that part. So at 29 onward to 31 is all we have of transformation, Claire. And that is not enough for me because we go from page 353 to 390. And that's all we have of her dealing with this and transforming to Jurassic World, Claire. And I wish we would have had more. It's just yeah. a little handful of pages here. Yeah, and I, yeah, I there's remember, a little bit in the back that's not even part of the book, but um, you know, yeah. thank yous and acknowledgments and oh, stuff. Oh no, the, I, I I avoided that. It literally is three fifty three to three ninety. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah. Um, I, I when I was reading, I was like, oh, I got a few more pages left. Oh no, this is it. This is the end. <laughs> yeah, and I feel I needed more of this. This is what I read the book for. These last three or 
so chapters like this is what i wanted here and i loved what was here i just wanted it to be drawn out longer i loved loved her talk with Wu in this these chapters and her saying um oh i wish i could find it again and i will because there's not that many pages here but i really liked her her talk with him when she was saying um she was kind of like distraught about it and he's like you know you could fix this like you could do all this and he gave her the i, I like that that he gave her the idea that she yeah. could run this place yeah because really he like he'd that. been through similar you know circumstance not not exactly but you know uh, the downfall of a park and stuff like that and and you know how do you come back from something like that basically like reaching well, out to him for an answer actually this is where she mentions the algae stuff to him i think her her findings with the algae i think i want to say that's back here because mm-hmm. she doesn't care at that point, like if she gets caught or who gets caught or with the journal or not, and she's just like laying it on anybody, and I I like that a lot. Um, oh, here, here, she on page three seventy four is where it is, where she's really talking about um, what's worth what, and and just really trying to cope with the things, and and he's about talking about mistakes, and she's like, no, these mistakes shouldn't happen, and he's like, but they will, and she's like, I don't know what I've learned from this, and he's like, you've learned. Um, what kind of mistakes are unacceptable and what to do with it. And I really liked that. And then he's like, well, and she's like, what, um, what would you do with it? And he said, knowledge and how to fix it. And, uh, this whole thing is just good. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. How she says, you make it sound like an opportunity. Like this whole thing is what I wanted in this book. These, these pages here, this discussion with, with Wu is what I wanted in this book i just wish this whole thing lasted a little longer and there's a little more exploration on it but really loved how he told her gave her the idea that she could how she can apply this get over it and fix it love that yeah i think that's fantastic that yeah it came from him um there, there's not not a ton of interaction between the two um, in these two movies here, there's a little bit in the beginning of the of Jurassic World, and then uh, like a glance, basically in, in another, Fallen Kingdom. Another point. Go ahead. I just thought of something else. Sorry, I'm all over the place. I'm like raising my hand, like oh, I didn't know. <laughs> um, how in the middle we were talking about their interaction in the middle, how he was very like in charge of things, and she was kind of intimidated a little bit by him. And at this point, he's like treating her like in, like an equal, oh, and yeah. respect in a way, and mm. I loved that. And um, it also brings context because as you said earlier he's been through this already and now she's been through something and he he could talk to her about it this was done this was this was great this yeah. might be my favorite part in the book oh right definitely here. this this um, moment where he's he's like you know uh making sure you the the mistakes you made this summer you spent here will never happen again uh you could go back home and be a, you know boring essentially or you could do yeah. something bigger work you know harder and make sure none of that happens again and and she that's where like she says here actually um it's like finding a key to something i didn't know was locked up me in charge of the park, making sure everyone is safe, making sure tra- tragedies like Izzy's and Justin's deaths never happen again, being in complete control. So love, that definitely, so yeah, hard. that's the moment um, it like unlocked her to to consider that as an option for herself. Loved, loved, and then it goes into the Mizrani part, part, which is my, my second. Like these two are my favorites, and um, and and she's like what sitting up top on a on a hill or something watching watching the dinosaurs and she is just not giving any cares what she's saying to him she is just saying whatever she wants and it's the best talk ever i mean there this whole thing is quotable yeah when he, when he's like what do you want and she's just going on and on and she just laying on laying it on him absolutely everything I love this part. I think I was smiling the whole way I was reading. Like this is what I wanted. Like this is what I waited for. I wanted this earlier because this is so good. Yeah, and the fact um, that um, you know she basically gives the um, the bad guys what they wanted in a sense. You know, I mean th- those two are going to pay for it, but she didn't want the uh, little sister. Um, What's her name? Victory or something like that. Um, um, I believe. Um, you know, she didn't want her to pay for the mistakes of, you know, the yeah, brother and sister. Um, yeah, so I thought that was a nice touch as well. Yeah, that was what she asked him for mm-hmm. to um, pay for her stuff. Um, yeah, continue the treatment, education and, paid for after the trials, save her, uh, stuff like that. She deserves it. 
and then and then he goes on to say and you want nothing for yourself and um when does she when do we go on here well it's a nice like that's like a nice callback to her original essay you know in a way it's not really thinking about what she has yeah. done and all that stuff it's about thinking forward and that's exactly what she you know re- how she resolves the problem here Oh, and then the next page is like, so, oh, this is when she mentions the algae to him, too. But then she kind of does a little threatening thing because she's like, it would, it would look bad for bright minds. You certainly don't want a scandal, do you? And he's like, oh, what, now what do you do? Like, he, she was kind of playing around with that, like not caring at all. Um, and then she mentioned the algae part. Um, oh, and then she, I think she reveals like all the notebooks and, and all that stuff going uh-huh. on. Now, here's the name. Um, Isabel, Isabel James. But it's it was spelled interestingly like I had never seen the Isabel spelled like that I S O B E L. Um, mm. So yeah, I was, that's where I was like, how'd you jump to that conclusion? Like Is- Isabel, <laughs> I don't know. Um, oh, and then here she's like totally she's revealing everything she found and just not giving three craps like whatever she's <laughs> she is full on like her anger of what she's been seeing what she's doing all this stuff she's been hiding she's just telling him straight off and not caring at all and that is so good and he's he's being honest with her which i love yeah. he's he's calmly talking and she's calmly talking and this is the power struggle stuff that i just eat up and love the pieces yeah. so this is right in my alley here um i really love this kind of stuff this is what i wish jurassic world did or fallen kingdom did like more of this hmm. i really like this kind of thing yeah um, i mean it, it is a layer to Mizrani as well because yeah. He he seems like a very nice guy in that movie, but also um, you know a lot of people put the blame on Claire for for some odd reason um, that she should be the one in jail that it's all her fault. But that's not the case. No, none of that was her choice. Um, Ms. Ronnie's the one who made the choices in that movie to uh, you know you know uh, what was it? he he like yelled back at Vivian at one point for um shutting down the park he's like no hang up the phone um Mm -hmm. you know don't do that don't call that order out um so it's all his fault in that sense and then you learn here that he's the one he he bought everybody off he paid for the silence of of these families and 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 uh you know to cover up this in uh investigation i guess because it would have shut down this park you know it would have uh, stopped the insurance and all that stuff and they never would have opened um so you know, in, in the same way that I guess Claire says later on in Jurassic World, like we'll never reopen. You know, it'll mm-hmm. be devastating if if that dinosaur reaches uh, Main Street. Um, so she she understands. I guess this is one of those moments that makes her understand in a way, but she doesn't like yeah. it. You know, she's not a big fan of that choice, but kind of gets it. I guess. Yeah, that's why I really like this part. There's a lot of that push and pull. And I, I like how this is where he offers her to, to stay here and fix the problems and make the place safe and all of that. And, and she's struggling with that, too. Like, she doesn't know anything. She doesn't know what to do anymore. And um, I just like her brutal honesty about everything in this part. It's like everything that you'd want to say in that situation, but no, you can't. And here she gets to and you kind of get to live vicariously through her doing this part. Um, trying to... I'm already like at the end. Yeah, I'm, I'm already at the back pages here. Yeah. But um. Yeah, and then at the very end is where she where she says um, how she. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I'm like reading as I'm trying to talk at the well, same time. Well, I, I think the the very like the last moment of this book is pretty interesting because it um, almost negates everything that just happened before it. Um, you know, because she's being a very uh, business-like person in his final moments, you know, she's like you said, like telling her piece, like, this is what's going to happen. You're going to do it my way basically. And I need Mm -hmm. to be the one to be in control, in charge and all that. She, she realizes all that stuff. That's, that's perfect. That's exactly what you wanted to see. But then I don't know at the, at the last moment, you know, she has that little moment with Pearl again. Where, you know, she – Pearl bends down and, um, you know, I don't know who created it. But there's uh, some artist on Twitter that I saw like painted this final scene, mm-hmm. which I thought was nice. Um, but Pearl bends down and, and, you know, Claire reaches out and, and pets the snout of this thing. And, you know, she she just ends the book on, hey, funny girl. Like she like yeah, is cool weird. with the dinosaurs again. She's like 
has that connection still. Like she didn't lose the connection, which is kind of where I assumed this book would end. Is like, you know, she is not necessarily afraid of dinosaurs, but she doesn't want that connection anymore um, because she realizes the loss that can happen. Uh, because that's who she is in the beginning of Jurassic World. She has yeah. no connection to dinosaurs. See, here's exactly where the, the page before that. Exactly. It, it says, um, if I stay, I've made a decision. I will not allow anyone or anything to take from me again. Um, and, and she says, not the place, not the creatures, not the people. She said, not the people in power who make decisions. She says, instead, I will be doing the taking of power, of influence, of control. I love that. Couldn't it have ended just there? Because yeah. you didn't need that extra bit in, in the back. I agree with you. That's weird. Because yeah. then it goes into ground, ground, blah, blah, and her, her leaving her spot. But if it would have just ended on that sentence at control, the, instead I will be taking, um, I will, I'll be doing the taking of power of influence of control. If it would just ended there. It would have been the most epic ending of all time. And then it kind of pulls you back to that weird interaction. And but yeah, I kind of a little seed saying, "Oh, but she still loves dinosaurs. It's okay." But no, I don't believe it. Yeah, it, it's a it's a strange place. Like I love the entire book, but it ends on that really strange place where uh, it really negated everything that just came. Um, yeah, because we saw her love dinosaurs this entire movie. Er, movie, <laughs> this entire book, um, mm -hmm. and we saw her care for animals and and all that stuff and who she was. And I basically forgot about it, you know, the raptor attack and, you know, her, how in charge she was at the end of this book. And then to just go right back to it all and just forget about all that. And now she's petting the dinosaur again. She's cool with it because as far as we know, this is the last moment that we'll see of Claire until Jurassic World yeah. when she's going down that elevator. And that's not um, the same person no. that ends this book. One page earlier, yes, but not that ending. So I thought that was interesting. Wait. To end it right there, petting a dinosaur, you know, being the same. I don't know. Even even one page earlier, because it was such a drastic change. I mean, I can kind of see why. Um, and these two important conversations with Wu and Misrani pushed that fact. But even then, even if it did end on the control line, I still don't buy the dinosaur stuff. I don't buy the sudden <laughs> shift. I don't I don't get how you can go one way than the other so quickly. Yeah, even if you do experience something traumatic, I still I still don't buy it. I still don't buy it. They're trying to make me buy this. I'm never going to buy this. Yeah. Well, but I think I think there's a difference between them selling this story like this is this is Claire's origin. This is what it is. But there's also like they did a great job with that. Don't get me wrong. Um, Tess did a great job setting up that story, mm -hmm. like making us try to believe that this is who she is. But at the same time, um, you're right. It is just – it's too hard to believe. Like I just yes. – I can't believe it because of my mm -hmm. history with this character, what we've known about this character and all that stuff and who she is. But I think that's on us. I think that's more so on us. You know, we, we, we're having the hard time letting go. Um, yeah. Yeah. And I that's am. kind of what Fallen Kingdom is telling us is to like let it go, you know, not Frozen style, but just uh, <laughs> to just forget about that and, and and just kind of move on because this is this is the way it is. Like this is our story. This is what you had said back in 2017 <sighs> to, to accept what they tell us. And um, uh. we're having a hard time with that, uh, definitely. But um, as far as the story goes, I – I had a great time. I really loved it. Aside from just wrapping up a little too quickly, um, and I don't know. I, I do want to go back to that raptor sequence. Um, I thought it was interesting that she had this kind of encounter. I mean, we expected it via the cover art, but I didn't. Yeah. I never. I never saw Claire as somebody who had that kind of encounter before. So that's another one of those instances right. where I'm like, I got to shift my perspective here. I have to change this up because this is the way it is. Right. I think it's turning into the this Claire in the book and Fallen Kingdom, as you said earlier, doesn't match with the Jurassic World Claire. Instead, we've been saying the Jurassic World Claire doesn't match with what they're feeding us. Now we have it backwards. We have to switch it to say the Jurassic World Claire doesn't match yeah. with what we have now. And it might not seem like a giant difference to say it one way or the other, but in our mindset, I'm with you on this because I know you, you're with me. And it's a different way of looking at it and a different way of just – thinking about the character in general by Jurassic World. They're all canon, but Jurassic World Claire is not the base, and that's the base that we were given at first. So to be completely 
flipped around on all ends and be like, this is the base and Fallen Kingdom's the base and Jurassic World is not the base. Yeah. That's a very strange thing to think about. And that's why we're having issues. That's why we're not adjusting. Well, I think um, maybe by the time Jurassic World 3 rolls around, maybe we'll have adjusted by then because we have more content with Claire acting this way than we do Jurassic World. Um, and we see glimpses of that in Fallen Kingdom, you know, and, and here her, her, you know, business attitude and all that stuff going forward. But, um, this is who she is. I mean, we just got to accept it. And it is hard because we had three years. We, we had that three years to establish who she was. But like I said before, it's only like in, from one day overnight into the next, basically. Right. Is that about it? Um, from, for Jurassic World. I feel cheated then because that's the character that I really liked and and <laughs> enjoyed. And now I'm like, wait, who is this character that I have no idea existed? And I missed the control part. Like this whole paragraph that my finger has been on since we've been talking at the end here. I missed that. Like, where is that? The the control and the power and the influence. I mean, and you, we get that at the beginning of the book with the influence wanting to be a senator because she wanted influence. So the beginning chapters... I'm there. And this ending here, I'm here as well. In Jurassic World, I'm here. It's just the middle adventure and then Fallen Kingdom. She had like no control of anything. She was totally played like that. Oh, I don't know. But she didn't control nothing. She didn't even care to control nothing. She just couldn't. Yeah, that there so, was like no chance. That movie was so that, fast paced. It was over. That one was what spanned over like two nights or something like that. But, you know, there was no chance for her to even catch up. You know, she was played, like you said. Yeah, so. and I don't know how I feel about that. Like, it didn't have to be written that way. Where's my conspiracy? She would have been in control with my conspiracy that I've been <laughs> trying to get to happen. Like, she would have had control in that. But then she would have lost it. But at least she would have had it at You got to follow point. your own advice, you know? Canon is what, what they tell you. <laughs> it is, but that doesn't mean I have to like it. That doesn't mean I, I have guess to be that's happy true. with it. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it is. It That's why I'm mad at the canon, because it, it is what it is. And I'm not liking that. I liked all that I knew it was all a lie you know like I liked what I knew and then they just switched around on me and now I'm all confused yeah yeah well uh we have we have three years to settle in with this until the next yeah. uh chapter you but, know uh in the story so I don't know there's there's uh some interesting stuff and uh you know uh, last week in the podcast we we learned about um uh, Jurassic World revealed the uh, audio play, basically where you can play along um, with uh, Alexa. I, I thought she was in here in the room with me. I didn't want to like have her talk, <laughs> um, but you know you can play along and you can learn new stories from that as well. So who knows what kind of other stories will pop up along the way? And you know, Tess would love to see more books. Uh, we would all love to see more books written. Mm-hmm. So whether we get a sequel to this, um, that would be fantastic if that ever happened. Or, yeah. you know, a story about another character. Like, I would love a Dr. Wu story or even an Owen story just to give him some more context to make me like him a little bit better. Because he's not he's not my favorite character in the world. But, you know, I like him. I, I have fun with him. But he's not my favorite character. But I would like that to kind of build backstory for a lot of more characters. So maybe we'll get some stories in the meantime. I don't know. And, and like I said, yeah. with that Jurassic World Revealed. It, it tells a story, and and you know Daniela Pineda is in it, which is awesome. Uh, so that's really cool. Um, so the canon survives and and it moves forward. And yeah. whether, I guess whether we like it or not, you know. Um, but I do like this, and I, I, don't, I, mean, I don't want to be lost in this uh, rant here at the end. We do, we did like this book, right? <laughs> yeah, I was just I was, I was just going to say that this would be a really hard book to write. I think I think oh, this was sure. this would been this has been really hard. I don't know how I would have written it just because of the two drastics that we've been presented with and even now we're having a hard time wrapping our mind around it so this was a very very hard book to write and given that material of trying to navigate she tested phenomenal like, yeah. i love what she did i think i couldn't have done this and i i love my character and i know this character and i don't think i could have figured out how to connect it and yeah. she did such a good job and it's it was just a really hard book to write and a really hard way to convince the audience of here's your 180 explanation exactly um, she did great she did great on that because it, it was it was hard I, I get it it would have been it was a hard hard write well to follow up michael Crichton, it's it's going to be near impossible you know because we've had oh, these well books you can't forever. compare that it's, well it's different you have you have to compare it because it's the third oh well, there was a few like little stories here and there but 
the third major book written in this chapter, essentially. Um, so you you kind of have nothing else to compare it to. So it kind of has to be relayed in that sense. But in that sense, I think it's a fantastic job, even though it's so different than that kind of style. And there are touches of it here and there because the entire plot line of figuring out the algae and stuff like that. So it, there was a lot of science in here, um, a lot of discussion with Wu and stuff like that. I thought it was very well played out. I thought it was very scientific yeah. at times. So it blended the genres very nicely because, you know, you have the book genre and the novel genre. Like they're very different. And I think uh, Tess did a great job at combining those things, making us interested in this love story and, and realizing, uh, for me at least, that – you know, it plays out how now that Claire is, uh, you know, adverse to like finding love because she's afraid she doesn't want her next partner to die. Um, and they didn't really even have a chance to explore this relationship, really. It was so short lived. I mean, they had a few weeks on this island, but really nothing happened in that in that uh, few weeks. So she's just afraid and she goes on this date, I guess, with Owen, but is too afraid to commit because she doesn't want to be let down. Uh, she doesn't want that to happen because especially him working with Raptors, um, that's a direct correlation to what happened with Justin. You know, he yeah. finds himself right in the mix with Raptors. It could happen at any time. You know, even though he does have that connection with them, he is brave. He is a special yeah. person. Um, but I, I yeah. did not connect that. I did not connect that at all. But even that stuff aside, this is a good read for just a casual Jurassic fan. Because I feel like mm -hmm. that could get lost as well as in the hardcore dinosaur lover Jurassic fans can be like, oh, I don't want to read a love story about Claire. That's the last thing I want. But there's so much in this book that focuses on the science and the other characters and the creation of the park that there's everyone could find something in this book, which is also hard to do and hard to balance. And that's all in here as well. So it's, yeah. it's readable across the board. I, I don't remember any um, indication about a volcano. Do you? I don't think there was anything in there. I would have written that yes. down. Was it? Yes. The volcano is mentioned. I okay. I could be lying and making this up. I swear the volcano is mentioned once because I think I sent a picture to Josh. Huh? I, I, I'm, I really let myself down See if I didn't write anything out, down about that. I could be. I could be lying and totally <laughs> making that up right now. But I feel like it happened in my mind. Like I feel like it happened, and I took a picture of it. Um, I don't know where's my pictures. I guess this is my pictures. Well, yeah, there's. I didn't. Cat. I didn't mention this little um, quote. Um, Doctor Wu says nature always finds a way. Um, <laughs> that's a bit on the nose. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they have a couple of those definitely. Yeah. Um, I want to say it was in the beginning of the book. I'm trying to see if I have my um, screen cap because it's all in order here and it's like before I went to the premiere I read part of the book so I think it was before that part um I don't know I, I again I could be totally making that up I feel like Tess needs to confirm or deny because it's like <laughs> we one just need word to reread. <laughs> in like these 400 chapters I, I swear it was in here somewhere but I could be wrong <laughs> but there's your, there you go. There's there you my go. Conclusive evidence. We'll 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 end the show on a complete vague moment where we don't know the answer. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I, 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 I don't know. Going. I think we uh, I think we covered it pretty well. Do you think? Yeah, I think we did a really good job. There's so much in this book, which is good as well. There's a lot. Yeah, I really liked it. It'll keep us talking for a very long time and debating and and questioning everything. And and I'm certainly going to reread it very soon. Uh, just to kind of get a better sense even because I'm only one time through. So it's yeah. going to take a lot. And, you know, I've read the uh, other books many times. I've watched the movies many, many times. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's all about re, re going over all these uh, things to, to learn more. And that's what we do here. You know, we, we analyze yeah. everything all the time. We're going to have to talk about this stuff in the mailbag. If somebody ever brings it up, we need to know, you know, yes. we need to know this stuff on the fly. I mean, that count that yeah and that counts you know bring it up in the mailbag because people talk movies and and plot i mean bring up the book because this counts as well but it yeah. has to talk about that yeah a lot of people question whether it is canon or not so yes it is we need to we need to discuss it further so yeah bring it up we, we'd love to hear what you guys think about it um and oh you know what that's one of the things I completely forgot about. I actually reached out. So, so before oh, we wrap no. it up. Can you put that in the mailbag? I, I should, yeah. You know what? Let's not comment on them. I will just read them real quick um, because I, I, I said I would. Um, but um, where did I do that here? Okay. So 
on Twitter, we have um, Jurassic Dork here says, nice addition to the canon with some great extras about Wu, Sorna, and Clara's relationship with Karen and the dinos. Sometimes too YA for my taste, but overall an interesting read. Makes a lot of sense. Mm-hmm. Aaron, uh, Aaron Sloan here says, I'm loving it. Definitely riveted by someone's thoughts about dinosaurs on paper. It's, it's a totally different way to experience them because of the movies. I can picture what everyone surrounding uh, – every, here we go – what every surrounding <laughs> looks like. Uh, but if Claire cares so much about animals, why isn't she vegan slash vegetarian? <laughs> <laughs> That's a valid point. Yeah. Tish says um, – I have waited my whole life for a Jurassic Park novel. Okay, well, maybe just the last 25 years. But still, I had issues with the timeline social media influencers in 2004. Uh, That really wasn't a thing yet, was it? Um, But that's maybe a small nitpick, one that I can gladly overlook. I want a sequel. I want to see how Claire went from caring about animals so much to calling them assets. I want all the the fill-in-the-gap books. I want to know what happened to Lex and Tim. Uh, what okay. about Alan and Ellie? <laughs> Give me all the JP books. I guess those are just other books that, that yeah. Tish wants. <laughs> I was like, wait, was Tim and Lex in this book? <laughs> <laughs> That's what this book was supposed to be, was the fill in the gap of how she got there. And then then this, this, this girl is like, well, you know, I want that book now. And I'm like, well, this was supposed to be this book. Yeah. Uh, my enjoyment, uh, sorry, I didn't even tell you who this was. Elise, uh, wrote, my enjoyment went up and down. By the end, I felt it was retcon of the original story intended to justify Claire's pivot in Fallen Kingdom. It's hard to reconcile it with her character or her dynamic with Mizrani as depicted in Jurassic World. The title is a misnomer. We need another book to see that evolution. Yeah. Yeah. I think a lot of people are really hitting on a lot of the things we said, um, so that is pretty interesting that, you know, I didn't even read these before um, starting here. So it's interesting to see that people felt the same way. Um, here on in, uh, Instagram, Zelly uh, Seagoat says, I'd say it's worth the investment and time. The Kindle edition is pretty cheap, blah, blah, blah. Uh, there is some insight into Claire and Jurassic World, which I appreciate as a fan. It does skew young. The characters are supposed to be late teens, early 20s. But they definitely read as teen and preteens, uh, at Ooh. least for my old lady eyes. Also, in my thirties here. Hey, don't no, oh, no. We're, not, we're not old, right? <laughs> no, no, um, no. So I didn't necessarily think that. I I definitely thought that they were young, you know, like in their early twenties or something like that, or teens, you know. But um, I think she's nineteen in this. Um, yeah, that but felt about right. I, I assumed she was 19. It felt right because of the internship and all that stuff. And yeah, the it fact says that, 19. Yeah, and the fact that the very- the, t- t- 2004, I think I was 18 or 19. So it, it really worked out there. So I'd never assumed that I was the same age. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, there you go. Uh, Wild Raptor said, I loved it. Um, let's see. Hannah here says, I really love the insight into Claire. It made me more curious about how she turned into such a cold person to the dinosaurs in Jurassic World, considering the book leaves off with her still being quite warm and happy towards them. Yeah, exactly. She really seemed to care a lot about dinosaurs. And even though the events in this book changed her, it didn't seem to change that. What happened? Corporate uh, Jurassic World power getting to her head? I, of course, immensely enjoyed the glimpses of Rexy that we got. The Dr. Rue sections were also really great. He is such an important character, and I'm glad he got a bigger spotlight. Overall, Claire is truly interesting character, and I hope we get more. So that's great. Yeah. Totally spot on. Yeah. Sarah Basinger says, Okay, I'm only a few chapters in, but I can already say that Tess Sharp does an amazing job giving us a glimpse inside Claire Deering's head. I feel like I know Claire I, and have resonated with many of her thoughts, like this one. Quote, Sometimes I feel that way, like my shoulders are rubbed raw from people's expectations, like I should not be, but I am. I persist even though, even if they don't like it, just, uh, just like the dinosaurs. End quote. Uh, oh. End quote without all those mess-ups. Um, (laughs) As a fellow writer, I am impressed with Sharp's ability to have so many quotable lines already, and I'm only on page 50. But my favorite scene already 
uh, that I've read so far is the part in the prologue where Claire remembers that moment. She stood outside the T-Rex paddock with the flare tightly clutched in her hand yes. while she waited for it to follow. That scene in Jurassic World is so much more powerful now as it, as is the background music for that scene when I'm listening to the soundtrack. Love. I, I love that. I love that whole comment. I, I agree. There's a lot of quotable things in here. I I love a lot of the quotes and that prologue was epic. So, yeah. Yeah, that like I said, we never expected that to um to go that way, and that was that was fantastic reliving that moment with her. Yeah, see now that makes me want that epilogue of explanation of what maybe in Claire's point of view now currently of what why that all that stuff changed her because people and us are not grasping her change, so maybe you need an epilogue of Claire explaining the change to us. Yeah, yeah, I, I mean like that. that that would have been nice, um, but yeah, that change. Yeah, it would have been after Jurassic World, so I don't know. I don't know. But, um, yeah, mm-hmm. it seems like everybody is spot on in the same place for the most part. That um, everybody's a little confused as to what the change is from here on out because uh, it didn't necessarily happen fully. We got a lot of change and a lot of good points, but not everything. And uh, I think everybody kind of sees that. But it seems like everybody did enjoy it. <laughs> so, yeah, oh, the yeah. book itself, yeah. It's yeah. just from t- chapter 29 onward is where it, everything is what everyone wanted there, and it just was so quick. Yeah. And that, and even onward past that, yeah. But for what we have and what the task was, I mean, yeah. I love this book. I love this book a lot. Yeah, so I expected no less than two hours of discussing this once again. <laughs> Why do we do this? How are we this way? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Sitting here on Sorna for the past two hours in this uh, swampy mess is is uh, interesting. You know, the smell's no. bad, the flies are bad, uh, um, my legs are soaked, but the book's in good two shape. Hours. So <laughs> it is. The two hours for us is like a short time. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, really. Somehow, somehow. So uh, before we get off this island, where can everybody find you online? Um, you could find me at Jennifer underscore Lynn 89 and at the Bryce Dallas Howard Network at BDH Network and BryceDHoward.com. All right. I think there's a storm coming. Uh, we got to no, get off I'm this terrified. island. I am not going to end up like Isabel. That's not good. Let's let's get out. No. What do you can't say? be left behind. <laughs> let's go. Make sure to visit JurassicParkPodcast.com to find all of our past episodes, brand new news articles, information on how to contact us, and much more. It's a great source for everything related to the podcast, and of course, Jurassic Park and Jurassic World. Head to JurassicParkPodcast.com and help us build a great community. Anybody hear that? Thanks for listening to the 160th episode of the Jurassic Park Podcast. Of course, a big thanks to Jen for joining me today on Site B to discuss the evolution of Claire. Now, this is only the first of many discussions on that book that I'm sure we're going to be having. It's certainly a worthy addition, I think, to the canon and the Jurassic lore. So thank you so much to Tess Sharp for giving us more stories to discuss here on the podcast. Also, thank you to everybody who reached out to give us your thoughts on the book. I think uh, mostly everybody was on the same page as us, loving it despite calling out our little qualms here and there. Please continue to send in your thoughts and concerns for the mailbag, and we'll be sure to discuss them soon. And like I said, all those voicemails, we will be hitting them in the mailbag next time. If you want to interact with us, we do most of our work over on Twitter at Jurassic Park Pod. We're also on Facebook at Facebook.com slash Jurassic Park Podcast. And our Instagram handle is at Jurassic Park Podcast. You can listen to us via Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, YouTube, our website, or wherever else podcasts are found. So make sure to subscribe to automatically get new episodes every week. If you haven't already, please give us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts. It will seriously help out our rankings and make it easier for Jurassic fans like you to find us. Don't forget to check out JurassicParkPodcast.com to find everything you heard here today. If you want to get a hold of us, you can email us with any news stories, MP3s, comments, or if you want to debut a segment of your own, send them to JurassicParkPod at gmail.com. 
or you could submit questions directly on our website contact form. If you'd like to record something for the show, send it in to us and we'll feature it in an upcoming episode. If you don't have any way to record, you can give our voicemail line a call and leave us a message. That number is 732-825-7763. Thanks for listening and enjoy. No, I'm, I'm simply saying that life uh, finds a way. You will remember to wash your hands before you eat anything.